us the uh, proposed legislation tonight in seventh order and sixth order and as well as the standard parking's overall practices and procedures and I would like to um, thank you for coming in and invite you to begin thank you thank you for having us pardon I'm sorry oh I said I I invite you to begin oh okay I'm sorry I didn't hear that um, Romy Valera with uh, standard parking corporation uh, thank you for the time uh, to to address this body um, the intent was just to give you an overview of um, the relationship and the partnership that we've we've now discussed for several weeks now and have been in operation since since January 2nd of uh, this this particular year um, we got involved as a result of our relationship with uh, central parking when they assumed the operations of the um, the city of Scranton's parking garages uh, under the direction of the receivership uh, a little history here uh, standard parking and central parking corporation uh, went through a merger and acquisition in the fall of last year uh, hence the two uh, brands or the two flags of the companies being represented here as a result of the relationship that was established when we assumed the operation of the parking garages uh, we were uh, engaged in discussing the the on-street meter operations uh, for the city of Scranton as a result <coughs> We, got in, we started to review a, the parking study that was done in the summer of 2012. It was commissioned by the parking authority by the firm of Rich and Associates. And we were asked to look at the study and kind of uh, comment on the particulars uh, of the recommendation of the parking study. And we've done so, we had done so, and <clears throat> made some suggestions as it relates to how to uh, operate the on-street program. One of the particulars of the recommendations of the parking study was the uh, upgrade of technology for the on-street uh, parking meters. The current meter inventory is, is uh, it's a little dated. It's uh, in some cases exceeded its useful life. It's become much more difficult to acquire parts, etc. They operate on, on a 9 volt va battery and um, many of the issues that have been uh, presented as a result of that those parking meters just the fact that when the battery dies you're not you know you can't pay for the meter and you can not access the parking space etc our discussion surrounded about the opportunity to provide the capital and to uh, acquire um, 750 credit card enabled meters that would uh, be deployed within the main uh, central district of, of the city of Scranton Part of the recommendation was that in addition to that we will look into by sell and also um, begin the the installation of additional parking spaces or regular additional parking spaces we even discussed looking at block faces and and, and conduct block faces studies as it relates to loading zones uh, disabled parking etc uh, but the key component was the acquisition of the 750 um, multi uh, single space meters with credit card enable uh, capabilities uh, smart card capabilities uh, as well as coins and also the uh, uh, the assumption of the parking enforcement and and parking writing citation um, um, duties which will also be upgraded with a new system uh, a new handheld system that will allow for the parking officers to photograph violations and upload those violations to a website that will allow uh, a viol you know someone who receives a violation to to view the violation before they pay it etc so we've discussed a number of technology deployment that include and are all surrounded the uh, around the on-street parking uh, management of, of uh, the city of Scranton and, and that's in a nutshell what what we are involved okay thank you very much um, Mr. Rogers and Mr. Scroggins, would you care to speak? Scroggins, sorry. Okay, we'll start with questions starting um, by myself uh, since I'm the acting president tonight and we will <coughs> proceed with Mr. McGough, Mr. Rogan and Mr. Loscom. Uh, my first question for you is how many cities do you currently run parking operations in? Uh, we have 
Well, the, the, two, the two companies run over or manage over 4,200 locations. Uh, but as it relates to parking or parking management in cities, municipalities, um, or institutions, it's um, well over 150. Uh, in addition to that, we run well over 150 uh, airports in the country. How successful have your operations in other cities been? And uh, please provide examples if you can. Um, we, we, f we feel very strongly that what the accomplishments of the deployment of our municipal services have been very successful on, on many fronts. But um, very recent examples of that will be um, cities like um, Richmond, Virginia, where we assumed the operations uh, almost a year to the date and um, have deployed the same concept of, of technology as it relates to, in this case, will be multi-space meters. Um, a new, uh, we, we've completely redesigned the residential parking program. They have over 5,000 residential parking programs. They are a downtown uh, that has a, a university within their downtown, so there's a significant student population and there's a significant uh, issue with the quality of life as it relates to residential parking. We've deployed uh, license plate recognition to address that as well. Other cities, um, cities like in, in the south will be, you know, cities like Miami Beach, city of Fort Myers. Uh, we've been, and in, in, as it relates to not too far from here, the, the, the borough of Westchester, where we've been managing and being a partner of them for, for several years now. and. Uh, We've helped them deploy some, some additional technology. Uh, we're currently in conversations right now as we speak with, uh, with them. They're doing a trial, uh, trial period of the IPS or the, multi, or the single space meter, credit card enabled meters that, that you guys are, um, that we have recommended here. Um, and uh, that, that will be a very close, close to home. Norristown, we also manage the, the, you know, the operations. Also, a, um, we've took over when they opened uh, the, C, uh, the, the redevelopment agency uh, built and opened a parking garage, and we um, were the ones who have been managing that. So overall, from a successful standpoint, I, I think if you reach out to our partners uh, in different cities and municipalities, you, you'll have a very favorable recommendation. Cities like Lawrence and Mass, which is a very, sta very small town with about 1,000 spaces, we um, took a non system a, a downtown that was non non paid it was free parking and we implemented a paid parking system where we added um, uh, regulator uh, over a thousand spaces we've received not only letters of recommendation from the mayor itself but uh, great feedback from the residents and merchants as to how we deployed that technology and the branding and and, and the approach that we've uh, been able to uh, uh, to utilize as it relates to the parking enforcement we, we we tend to register to the philosophy that we are turning parking enforcement officers and, and allowing them to become or training them to become ambassadors, uh, which is uh, from a different perspective, you know, giving, giving them different rules, uh, giving them different training as it relates to, you know, how we write a parking citation and how we uh, deliver a different level of service. Okay. Speaking of merchants, uh, my next question does deal somewhat with uh, merchants. Please describe the economic impact that increasing meter fees has had in other cities. Um, you know, there, there's, I don't know that there's anything been written, written as it relates to the increase in parking meter fees impacting businesses uh, as far as white paper is concerned, as, as far as studies have been done. The reason parking fees in, in the on-street environment have, or typically are raised or are, are increased is to to manage the on-street uh, or, or the curb space. Uh, and that is to uh, maintain a level of occupancy that is uh, at or below the 85% capacity. And, and that is to discourage long-term parkers from parking and occupying a, um, a single uh, or, or an on-street space for a longer period than what's, what's reasonable, what's a reasonable turnover for the land use that it's serving. Um, you know, parking rate, parking rate increases as it relates to on-street on street perspective is you know over the last several years has been pretty much a common practice in trying to 
uh, segue that into uh, getting to uh, generate a turnover of these, you know, very um, highly resourced uh, inventory. Uh, and, and based on the study that was done here, it, it was clear that, you know, there was a recommendation that that will be one of the tools to accomplish that task. Okay. <clears throat> you indicated that you'll generate an additional <clears throat> $1.8 million in revenue for the city of Scranton. Um, previously, which is approximately 34,615.38 per week. Can you indicate how this figure was determined and what will contribute to the revenue enhancement? Uh, the figures were based on the operating history that was uh, forwarded to us and uh, was allowed uh, that, we, that we reviewed. In particular, it was uh, we, we took in consideration extension of hours of operation to, to APM. We took in consideration uh, the addition of Saturday, um, Saturday's uh, operations, just like Monday, like from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. In addition to that, we took in consideration the technology deployment. Um, to give you an example, uh, this past uh, month that we've been in operations, we, had, uh, we have replaced uh, 600 batteries from the meters, and these were 600 meters that were uh, from the late of December till when we replaced them were not in operation. So those <clears throat> that's that that's all accumulative revenue loss, and and it was represented in the revenues that we collected. In addition to that, um, we took in consideration that if you have a system that takes credit card. Uh, the industry standard and industry performance and our own and our own. Uh, database tells us there's an increase in revenues of anywhere between 15 to 25 percent just by adding a f an additional form of payment and uh, the example is if you approach a single space meter that's coins only and you have no coins you're going to take a chance of getting a ticket and running in and doing your five minute affair if you have a credit card or a smart card uh, ability to pay most most likely you will pay um, based on the revenues we've seen, the demographics seem to indicate and the data seems to indicate that perhaps there's a compliance level about 50%. What that means is that 50% of the folks who walk up to a meter do pay. And, uh, and they will do so if the meter is, is working and they'll do so if there's multiple options to pay. So some of the, the, the revenue data is collected around the, uh, the additional revenues that are generated by, by those functions. Okay. <clears throat> what research or studies have been done to determine how effective the increases to rates and hours of operations will be for the city? Um, I think s some of what I just stated to you. Yeah, I, I, it, it is a little bit repetitive, mm -hmm. but um, you have done a study, you indicated. Well, we operate in over 150 municipalities. We. We have been, I have been in the industry 24 years. My, my experience in municipal parking dates back into 1989 where I started as a parking enforcement officer. I uh, basically managed a system, uh, a, little, a little bit over 20,000 parking spaces and a little bit over 10,000 parking meters and have been involved, personally involved in several applications where there's been a technology improvement where an additional form of payment can generate any between that 15 to 20 percent. Uh, the additional of, of cell phone can generate some additional revenue. So uh, not only is it you know, personal experience, but also the fact that we do have a database that is pretty significant in, in allowing us to review and, and to make those, those, those uh, calculations. Okay. I understand that the city will be purchasing two vehicles to assist in parking operations that Standard will be using. At the end of the contract, can you please confirm that the city will own these vehicles? That, that is correct. And the two vehicles, one vehicle is for uh, the meter collection and meter maintenance. Right now, the individual has to, once that canister is full, has to walk back to return that canister. And, and there's not, no, not a way for, uh, for him at this point to even load that to a vehicle and drive back. So uh, it's for that. And then when, we, when he has to go out, and fix the parking meters or change a battery that's done on, on foot right now. So we're trying to uh, facilitate that. The vehicle is for the enforcement officers to go out and also make sure that they have access to the outskirts of, of the city and, and, and do their enforcement and their routes. Okay. 
Um, in a previous document uh, from November, I remember seeing some verbiage about best practices uh, as a revenue enhancement. And I was wondering, could you please describe what street meter best practices are? Um, they vary. One of the one of the variations is um, what we call separation of duties, and and that is, you know, what key controls the meters are open. The meters have two different keys. There's a top key which is for the mechanism, and there's a bottom key that's for the vault. Uh, both of those keys should be um, maintained on the on the separate controls. Should be issued on the separate controls. Uh, when you're doing meter collections, at times you should, in, in some cases, should have uh, uh, two bodies, kind of um, you know, making sure that you know that there's that the collections are, are happening and that they're for, for safety reasons, etc. Uh, so, from a revenue collection standpoint, that that's what we call segregation of duties is one of the you know one of the most uh, evident practices or best practices that, that are applied. The the other one is really the when it comes to scheduling. Um, we, based on the study that we, the numbers and the data we, we've, we've reviewed and based on our experience right now after a month is we recognize that the peak demand of parking for on street is, is, is starts at later hours. Yet, you know, there's staffing, sometimes the staffing can start very early in the mornings and there's really no activity until, you know, midday, late afternoon. So that, that's another application where, you know, best practice will be that you use the data that's collected from from the equipment, because now the equipment is going to have a management report that's going to tell you when the meter was, when the meter was paid, how, ma how it was paid, uh, when it was collected, you know, how many times it was utilized. It's going to give you information that's going to allow you to uh, be able to provide uh, different staffing schedules, et cetera. Okay. And uh, subsequently, can you please describe what citation management best pr practices are? Um, Mostly related to the, uh, the collection efforts. Uh, one is the issuance of parking citations, uh, the ability to take the, the pictures, not digital, but, uh, but, but real pictures that can tie a vehicle into to the violation. So therefore, reducing the, uh, the opportunity for an error or for a dismissal. Two is how often a violation is Collected, or there's an effort to collect the, the violations that was issued, and those are the two major um, uh, best practices improvements that, that typically happen in operation. Okay. Have you spoke with any downtown businesses regarding the proposed changes to the parking meter operations, and if so, what were some of their reactions? Um, the only conversation we've had happened today in the morning. We were in a session for approximately two hours. And um, you know there there was a, a mixed reaction as to um, the hours of operations being extended to the Saturdays. Uh, hours of operation being extended. Um, there's a lot of discussion about the parking garage, we uh, which we obviously do not um, have any say over. Um, but overall, our offer to the merchants at this particular meeting was to. Um, to have a seat at the table to continue, you know, being engaged and involved and, and be able to participate and provide our recommendations just as well as hear their recommendations as it relates to, as it relates to the uh, parking management of the on street. Okay. <clears throat> and my last question uh, you answered through your responses to other questions, so that is it. Uh, Mr. McGough, do you have any questions <coughs> for standard parking? Uh, yes, I, I do. Some, some lengthy ones as well. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, first, uh, I, I'd like to address this uh, in two ways. We're, we're looking at two pieces of legislation this evening. One, the management agreement, and the other, uh, dealing with the rates and hours and days. So I, I guess I have questions pertinent to each part of, or each of those pieces of legislation. Um, first, on the, uh, the management agreement, uh, it, it states in the, in the agreement that the, it, the, the agreement may be terminated at any point in time by either party. Is that true? 
I don't have the agreement in front of me. Um, there have been some amendments made, but I think that was the premise of the fact that we both had a termination termination clause. Yes. It, it is, can that be, I, I guess my question is, can that be terminated without cause? It, it is It is without cause. And by, by each party, you think it's how it states. So that we could enter into this management agreement and six months from now, if standard parking is not uh, pleased with it, uh, 60 days later, it could be terminated? Yeah, that's the language. The, 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 only, the only caveat to that language is we're coming in with a capital investment of, I think we provided that, um, uh, the, cap, the capital cost for the, <coughs> for the parking meters, which is, um, going off memory, but 347000 or something like that, so we, which we're going we're gonna to buy the meters on the city's behalf. We're going to amortize that over five years. So if, if we're terminated, all we're asking as far as the language is concerned that you know we're you know we made whole on what unamortized capital has it's left of of that because that's that will re, that will be equipment that you will retain <coughs> also it i was unable to find is there anything should should standard parking not be able to meet the um revenue projections is there any um stipulation contained in the agreement that would protect the city and guarantee that in some way? There, there's nothing in the agreement that does that. Um, well, our, our revenue projections are strictly estimates based on the information that, that we have from your past, I believe it's three years, uh, information we gather from what was provided to us from the reports from the parking uh, authority and also from, from, the, from the study that was done in 2011 or 2012. We made those projections based on your current inventory, we made those projections based on uh, a couple of things happening, you know, the rates, you know, the rate increase, the hours of operations, et cetera. So we did not guarantee that. Uh, <clears throat> the, the cost for, uh, contained in the management agreement, um, it's $10,000 per month over a five-year period? Yes. Would the agreement be? Um, in addition, if I'm reading this correctly, there is a meter charge of $6,910 per month. Um, is that, are you referring to the amortization expense? Yes. Yes. Um, also a vehicle charge of $895 per month. That's to cover the amortization expense for the two vehicles. Uh, it, that's not, is that per vehicle or is it for both? Uh, I believe that's both. And, and then also included is a, it says 10% uh, of citation revenues as processing, a processing? Yeah, yeah the, uh, the, the processing of the citations is of all revenues collected. Uh, the fee for that, you know, the expense to cover the expenses of that is 10% of all revenues collected. That includes uh, the, hand, the deployment of the handhelds that I just kind of described. Right. And it, it also includes the processing of citations, all the DMV lookouts. It also includes the, you know, the um, going after the collection services or efforts for, that, for the citations that have been issued. Any estimate on what that cost may be? Um, I'll be going off memory, but uh, I think if you're based on what you wrote, um, I think your parking fines have been uh, averaging, uh, you're probably averaging about, uh, it, it varies from 300, in 2008, 376,000. Uh, you've, you've collected as much as 447,000. Uh, you're down to your 2012 uh, was two, 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 262,000 after 10 months. So, so we're talking maybe another two to 3,000 per month? Yeah. So when, we're, when it's all said and done, the city is looking at basically close to $20,000 per month in cost. 
for those services that you described? Yes. If I add all of those together, I think I'm coming close to close to 20,000, if not over 20,000. For the services that you described, yes. Okay. Uh, I, I guess uh, th that concerns me. It seems as though in, we start at 10,000, but yet uh, the city is actually looking at a much greater, you know, cost to implement or, or to agree to this management, uh, to your management of the parking meters. Well, I, it, that the additional cost is as a result of the deployment of the technology, which is the 750 meters that uh, are going to be deployed that you're going to own at the end of this, you know, the, of the period. Um, also, it, and again, I'm not, I'm just reading this uh, myself. Uh, you, you're talking about new meters. It, am I also correct in assuming that it also says any upgrades to the meters would be at a cost of two, two excuse me, Two dollars and fifty cents per meter. Upgrade. Uh, let me see if I can find it. There was something in there on upgrades. It might have been under a section for IPS. Well, you may be referring to the communication cost. Uh, it could be the communication cost that is required for the credit card transaction to occur. If, if okay, that may so be that, you're that would be an additional cost. Yeah, that's that's the operation, uh, the operating expense for those meters to communicate. But that's in addition to all of the other things that we mentioned. Yeah, those are all operational expenses, and you have the labor expense as well. Okay. Um, also, for real-time data reporting, which I believe is an enhancement that we were all um, talking about it originally. Um, that that would be, an, if that were to be included in this program, that there would be an additional $2.75 per meter per month charge? Yeah. The communication and the, and the credit card transactions fees and, and, and the data moving from the single space meter to the, to the reporting or the management reporting that you were referring to, it averages out, it's based on the number of transactions, but it averages out all in at about $9 a space. It, again, uh, parenthetical comment, uh, it, it seems as though this just gets more and more expensive as we, we move along. Uh, it, it, is, it is the cost of acquiring the equipment, it is the cost of operating the equipment, but the upside of that is well over that 20 to 25 percent in additional revenue. that. That, that generates that. So if we're talking at 25,000, maybe we're up to about 25,000 per month in costs? Mm. Uh, all in? I mean, uh, uh, yes. Do, yeah, don't. <laughs> uh, well, I, I mean, we're at 20, and then with you start talking upgrades and things, uh, processing. I, I, would rather, I, would, I would rather you take the, uh, the total. I think the total budget and divide that by 12, and yeah, that, that will be the number. I mean, that, that's, that, okay. that includes all the operational expenses. Okay. Um, that's part, uh, finished with questions on the, the management section. Uh, as far as the second piece of legislation dealing with the um, other aspects, the, the rates, the hours, the days, um, I do have some problems with that, and I would be um, I, I would say right out that if, if there were not to be changes made to that, I, I could not vote for that part of the legislation. Um, in, in, terms of, in terms of the days, uh, I, I think that doing meter collections on a Saturday would be very detrimental to downtown businesses. I don't know what your statistics show in other areas, but it just seems my knowledge of the city of Scranton that it would be a detriment to downtown businesses and 
to people coming into the city. Would you agree or? Um, the, the, the only reason that the operations for Saturday applies is to continue to provide the available short-term parking spaces for those who are coming to visit. The report that was done by an independent consultant uh, said that about you know 90 percent of those spaces the, f the people stay an hour or less. So the need for available short-term parking is it was evident in their study and their, and their data. So if you if you want to discourage a long-term parking for coming in on a Saturday and parking there all day mm -hmm. and that's and that's okay that's that's a decision that you make uh, but if you want to intend to have those spaces available for the short-term parkers then you're going to have to have those hours of operation in place. Uh, the second thing that, uh, and, and let me go back. I, I'm assuming that you were involved in negotiating these terms, the hours, days, that you were involved in that process? Um, involved in, you know, making the recommendation that those, yes. those yeah. Okay. Um, hours. What was the reason for extending the hours to 8 p.m.? Uh, that, that again, to me, is a, a detriment to many of the activities that take place in downtown Scranton. Uh, we have uh, First Friday programs, uh, you know, different events that occur at restaurants, uh, people coming downtown to just have dinner. Um, it, it seems to me that that's an added burden and, again, a detriment to uh, the downtown area. Again, to discourage the long-term parker that or employee that occupies a space um, and, and have those spaces available. Okay, I, I guess I would counter that by saying that most of the downtown workers are probably out of the city by 6 o'clock. Uh, so that you're looking at you know, a, a second set of people coming to the downtown. But th that's my belief. Uh, the other... The other question I had and the other problem I had with with that part of it and it was I don't know if it's in the agreement I couldn't find anything um, but would would groups having events in the downtown be responsible for loss of revenue for parking you know for meter parking uh, examples, the Italian Festival, Labor Day weekend, St. Patrick's Day parade, three-on-three -three basketball tournament. Uh. We, we, we are the managing arm of, of this, of the city. We are working at, you know, the will of the city. We are working on the direction and guidance of the city. So if there's an event and the city decides to shut down parking, we, we, we don't, it doesn't, it's not an event that hurts us in any way. It's an event that is, you know, that's that's the decision that the city wants to wants to assume. If there's a parade, if there's a first Friday, if there's a merchant event, and there's you know blocks that want to be shut down, our job will be to go out and put meter bags in them, and that's the event takes place. I mean, there's no, we're not obligated. The city's not obligated to us for any any revenue loss or any commitments in in that. Hour. We're the operating arm of the city. Okay, and, and thank you. I, right, I believe right now that that is how things operate. It's at the prerogative of the of, of the this city of the body that you know events come up and say we're requesting street closures, and the, this body agrees that a street, a street closure is, is warranted. And mm -hmm. and your question to us will be, you know, what would that impact? What would what would be the revenue impact? And we'll be able to have the data to say that's the revenue impact of X and. And that's, that's the information you'll have. Thank you very much. Uh, the, the, the following questions are ones that I received from um, citizens. Uh, and I'm asking on their behalf uh, for s on some of these. Um, first one, who will be in enforcing the on-street non-metered parking? Will standard parking be responsible for such things as loading zones, uh, disabled parking. Yes. And, and would that be throughout the city or just in the designated areas? Um, my understanding is throughout the city as, as, as we're required, as we will be required. Uh, 
Uh, next question. I'm going down to see if I can find them. Um, will will standard parking be involved in issuing parking permits? We will if there's a, for example, if there's a residential parking program that needs to be in, implemented or if there's a recommendation for, from us that there is a particular area of of on street that it be, is, it's better served by long term parkers and, and not by short term meters. Therefore, you know, someone can can acquire a long term pass to park in an on street em, em, environment. We, we will. And uh, the next question they had was why is the um, agreement renewal automatic instead of a deliberate act of council or the city or? Uh, it, it says that it would automatically renew unless um, uh, uh, renew after what after a year or after five uh, years uh, it, it's a five-year contract with with a renew option I think the renewal option you exercise a 60-day clause that it's that it's allowed under the contract language yes it, it says uh, agreement shall automatically renew from year to year until either party gives written notice of non-renewal um, thank you. Uh, but it was just, uh, is that a standard? Yeah, uh, that's pretty standard. Uh, you know, the, again, uh, the, the, only, uh, the only concern, and that doesn't have to be a concern, that w the issue of the capital outlay. You know, the city decides that, they, you know, you want to buy and, and, and produce and buy the meters outright, and, and not have us involved in that process, you have the right, which means now you, when you cancel us, you cancel us. We, we, we have no, there's no remedy in that case. So that's the only reason why it's five years, so we could take the, the big chunk of capital outlay and amortize it over, over the five, five years. Uh, the other thing, which is, I think it's important, is the life cycle of, these, of these, uh, this parking equipment, it's, it's about seven years, could be a little longer. You have inventory here that it's, you know obsolete <laughs> well, well it's well it's up in age but if it's maintained and if it's if it's if it the upkeep is is fair you're going to get more than seven years so the amortization schedule or the amortization payment that you refer to of six thousand dollars that goes away mm -hmm. in year five right thank you um in in the agreement it says the operate under operators obligations supervise and direct the operation of the spaces and render the usual and customary services including but not limited to parking station collection services and parking enhancement services um, what other services might there be that are included there um, you may decide that you want to add um, I don't know street cleaning uh, could be a, a service that you may want to add um, in some cases, we have um, folks who are, you know, uh, there's, there are downtown programs that they hire individuals to go out and, and kind of do some light maintenance, light sweeping, et cetera, throughout downtown. So that may be a service you may want to add. Um, comes off mine. Okay. Uh, next, it says uh, in, in the same. Uh, employ sufficient experience and qualified personnel. What is your projection for full-time employees, part-time employees? Uh, no, we've retained all the employees that were, you know, that are that were existing to to that were working with the city. We retain every one of those employees right now. There would be no additional. You don't foresee any additional employees. I, at this point, um, we're not we're not expecting to add any anything at this point, unless something you know, unless we have more inventory, or you know, something to that effect. We're not foreseeing that. I, I guess one of the the thing, if if there's also going to be uh, monitoring of um, parking throughout the city, loading zones, as I mentioned before, it would seem as though. Uh, there would be an, a need for additional personnel, but 
We'll have to wait and see what the what the will of this the body is as as it relates to extending the hours of operations, and and that's that's going to dictate whether we add or, or not. I really it really will. And, and since the monitoring is set from eight to eight, eight a.m. to eight p.m., would that be one person working a twelve-hour shift, or would it be two people working six-hour shifts, or? We we're considering a number of options how we're going to schedule how we're going to address us the scheduling um, demands but it but it could be a full-time job you know the eight hours starting at a later time and it could okay. be starting at a yeah thank you <clears throat> on the budget will the budget submitted to the city consist of only the gross receipts operating expenses and the difference between the receipts and expenses or will it will there be details supporting the receipts and expenses and will the budget be by month and total for the year it will be very detailed it will be uh, there will be uh, for every dollar spent there will be uh, a subsequent backup there will be uh, timesheets um, every expense will be um, will be accounted for and reported in, in a monthly statement and it will be reported on a monthly basis, monthly basis, year to date, monthly basis, you know, year to budget. And what is the presumed likelihood of expenses exceeding the budget? Get to page two. By more than 10%. And that was another cost that I forgot to mention. We're not we're not we're not assuming that that's going to be the case unless that the um, that there is a extraordinary event that you know perhaps there's an event that you know the st staff of the city wants us to st to staff uh, or during weekends or after hours, um, but uh, otherwise we're, our projections are pretty pretty well detailed based on the history that we have of the program based on the proposal of the program. Uh, this one, I, I, we may have addressed this before, but uh, if the city is paying for all operating expenses and covering any mon monthly shortfall, um, the city is assuming all the risks, so why is an additional process citation processing fee um, each month necessary? The processing fee is, is the you know, is the event of going out, you know, we'll have a, a there's a third party that handles all the you know, DMV look lookups and, and 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 you know processes all the citations and goes out and collects all these citations. That's and, and provides the handhelds and upgrades to the handheld software upgrades, etc. So that's that's what the includes. That's what the ten percent covers that service. Um, it, when you and maybe this is a question I probably should ask of attorney <coughs> use, and I'll do that later. Um, as far as the office facility that is going to be, I'm assuming, in, in City Hall, or are we not uh, right sure now? Of that? <laughs> right now, we well, right now we're at, at a very small space at City Hall that it's not adequate. I mean, for for customers to come and, and, and try to conduct business, our our officers are very cramped. Uh, you know, our intent was to identify an office space. Uh, you know, in City Hall, obviously, there's not a lot of room. So, you know, the the discussions have been to identify uh, some some office uh, with you know with the um, curbside you know level access where folks can come in and inter and interact with with you know our customer service, et cetera. But at this point, we're we're in the process of identifying that space. Would that let's say a rent, let's say there is a space that would be rented would that be at an additional cost to the city or would that be incurred by standard parking that is that is an expense that the city will assume uh, the the vehicles that will be um, acquired will they be for use by all city employees or would they be dedicated to um, scrant the or two standard parking for their employees. The standard parking employees working in the contract, on the contract. Uh, 
the agreement says that is based on a management of 1,400 meters, but only 750 individual meters are being procured. Um, where will these meters be placed? In the highest, you know, demand areas of of the of the of the core of the business core, which is uh, as detailed in the study, it's about 730 something. We're, we're acquiring 750 new new meters. What that would allow us to do is increase the inventory of the current meters, take the best of those, and you know, put them in the out in the out in the outer core of the business and Hopefully, in years two or three, you know, we can come back and and, and acquire the the remaining inventory. Also, these are the the short-term parking meters. Mm -hmm. So these are the ones that are requiring a tremendous amount of use. Uh, have these meters been ordered in anticipation of this? They they have not. Um, if this agreement is approved, will the city be assessed the charge of six thousand nine hundred ten dollars for the month of January. No, the city will be assessed the amount of the amortization when the meters get delivered and installed. Okay, thank you. Um, as far as the vehicles, and again, this may be something that we asked. Um, what's the payment period for the two vehicles? Sixty months. That was yeah. Okay, I, I, I thought we. That you had answered that before. Thank you. And is there a specific place where these will be kept? Do we have a, a garage or? We, we will probably identify a parking garage where we can we can maintain them or keep them. Will this be another expense? No. Okay. There's always a parking meter in front of the <laughs> location. Uh, let's see. Two more. <laughs> and then I finished. Thank you. Um, was the insurance, uh, this is paragraph, uh, let me get to it. <coughs> I'm, I'm behind on my, deals with the insurance. Um, is that one? Oh, I'm sorry. And the last thing that I have it says approvals whenever the approval of either party is required herein such approval shall not be unreasonably withheld or delayed um, who is to determine what is reasonable and unreasonable um, I would imagine it will be the either your city administrator or this body I'm, I'm not sure who, who that's gonna be that I will leave that to your discussion. that would be something to yeah open discussion yeah and and, and that is um, you know, I think it's defined as reasonable. I think there's a definition, a legal definition for that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, that is the extent of the questions that I had. And I thank you very much for being patient with me on these. And, and thank you for the answers. They were oh, very thank you. informative. If I could, Mr. McGough, just very yes. briefly. Um, it's not in this agreement in response to one of your questions, but it's in file of council number six, which is on sixth order tonight, uh, regarding the ability of the mayor and the police, uh, the chief of police, uh, to suspend, you know, meet the meters, you know, when they're going to operate for special events and things like that. So that's solely within the discretion of the of the mayor and the chief of police. Uh, in tonight's ordinance, it's in section 14. It says temporary suspension. Uh, prescribing other regulations, and it's under subsection A, uh, temporary suspension of ordinance provisions. The provisions of this ordinance may be temporarily suspended by the mayor or the chief of police or his designee, and he or she may prescribe temporarily such other rules and regulations as traffic conditions may require. So as to those issues, that's not in their contract, but their contract is bound by the ordinance that sets the parking rates and, you know, those regulations. So that's in uh, item that's number six. Yeah. That's, okay, that's where that is. That's why they don't have, if the mayor suspends that, you know, that's why it's not in this agreement. Uh, I guess one last comment, I'm sorry. Uh, is this 
should council amend the hours, rates, and things, is standard parking amenable to changes in that? Or um, would they be things that would terminate the agreement? No, we, our, the recommendations and, and the revenue assumptions that, that you mentioned were based on, on those parameters. You know, they, they can always, we could always come back and, and look at, you know, what the new assumptions will be under whatever direction you give us. Um, it was obvious after today's meeting with the merchants that, that the, the Saturday uh, operations was of, of great concern, and, uh, and I would agree that if that's something that needs to be looked on down the road, I, I, we will be open to that, you know, to that recommendation. We're not, uh, we're not executing anything here other than the fact that we've given you, you know, we provided some advice based on data that was collected very recent for a very reputable firm that understands, you know, uh, parking turnover, economic development, I mean, economic uh, uh, for, uh, demand analysis, et cetera. And we tend to agree with the recommendations they made. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Mr. Rogan, do you have Yes, any thank questions? you. And I thank you for coming in. And just, <clears throat> just to give you folks some background on um, how controversial of an issue this is just three weeks ago if you look behind you at all the folks behind you there were maybe three or four people at this meeting so this is something that I know myself and I was speaking to Mr. McGough this morning and I'm sure the same for all my colleagues um, our phones have been ringing off the hook since this came about and just sitting here now with, with, with everything going on I, I probably have a hundred text messages from from folks watching who have questions they want asked and, and different things but I have some some quick questions and some longer questions but we'll start off with uh, the more simple ones and I think some of these have been answered but I would just like to get this out there for the public as well um, who will be paying for the um, the additional meters in this plan the additional meters at, at a later phase at, at the end at the end of the day who will be paying for the additional meters would it be your firm or would it be Scranton we, we will be buying the meters the 750 meters, we will be buying the meters um, when the con when, if the contract is approved. We'll buy the meters, and then at the end of the term, they belong to the city of Scranton. And through the course of the, of the contract, of the, the city is paying for those meters? Yes. The city is reimbursing for those meters. And are there any interest fees, or is there anything tacked on to that cost? I know it's spread out over the course of the five years. Are there any fees that your firm is tacking on to the cost of those meters versus us just going out and buying them on our own? No, there, there is a, the, there's a finance, the financing fee and the sales tax, because we do have to pay a sales tax, because we're, 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 we're not a non-taxable agency, and regardless of the fact that we bind them on your behalf, between the uh, in, interest rate and the sales tax, uh, what I, I believe it was about 8, 875, 8%, 8, 8, 8 8.75, included the, the financing and the sales tax. So then the financing would be 2.75? Pennsylvania sales tax no, is 6%. It's, no, the sales tax over the, the entire, on, on the entire contract, when you amortize it over the entire life of the contract, that was, that was the, the term. Okay. But, it, but at the end, whether it's spread out or, you know, all at once, the city is paying for the meters, though. Yes, absolutely. And um, the staff, who will be paying the salary for the staff? There will be our employees who will be paying them, and the city will be reimbursing us. So the city will be paying for the staff as yes. well? Yes. Who will be paying for the supplies? The city will be reimbursing. The All the operating expenses that you have in front of you will be reimbursed to us by the city. Thank you. That, that makes it much easier. So the city is paying for, for everything. Will the employees be the same employees that are currently operating meter collectors, some, some that are here today? They are right now. And as uh, I believe you answered this to Mr. Mr. McGough's question, no additional employees will be hired. Well, at this point, we have not, you know, we have not looked at, you know, we, we've got the hours of operations. Uh, we're not making any assumptions until this body uh, agrees or disagrees whether the extended hours of operations, whether these, the schedules, a uh, shift in schedule will cover the hours of operations or not. So depending on... But as far on, as there won't be, you know, an expert coming in, you know, to, to run things, they'll be paid, a, I don't know, $100,000 a year or anything of that nature. No, we, we will be that. So if the city currently, we currently own the meters, we currently pay the staff, we currently pay for the supplies, we currently have the employees, and we could go out and buy meters on our own. 
what is the advantage of us making this deal tonight and placing a yes vote for this contract? Um, well, right now you don't have the, I think it's my understanding that you don't have the infrastructure after the, the parking authority was, was not in existence. You don't have the infrastructure in order to manage the contract from a professional level perspective. You don't have a parking director or um, you, know, you don't have the parking expertise as it relates to that, and that, and that was our understanding. Uh, part of the additional resources that are provided to you under this contract is you, know, you have the expertise of not only the folks that sit here, but of a pretty significant corporation that is available to uh, also act as a consultant to the city. And uh, I think over the last several months, we've, we've done that just in, in advising the city and participating with the city as it relates to the parking program and, and, and being able to provide those services and resources. So the cost of that expertise is $10,000 a month as well as a 10%, as Attorney Hughes always calls it, the VIG on the, uh, on the, on the um, citations. Yeah, the ten percent is a is the third party expense that will be detailed as a reimbursable expense in your report. It is not a fee that we attack along as additional as as an additional fee to us. That will be a fee that for that fee, the third party would go out and process the citations. First of all, issue you new handhelds, issue you the equipment, process the every citation that's issued, go out and collect every citation that is issued, and for that for those services is ten percent. My concern on this and obviously the big concern and it was brought up before is meters on Saturdays which I believe will hurt downtown businesses inc increasing the rates that is the main concern that people have come to us with business owners and residents but even beyond that we have to as elected officials decide whether this deal is a good deal for the taxpayers or not and I don't think anyone is against trying to get as much money as we can out of our meters in a smart way but I really have to question when you, met, you say that you could bring in $1.8 million additional in revenue, but that's being achieved by 750 new meters, which we could do on our own, by having Saturday collections, which we could do on our own, by increasing the collection times um, from 5 o'clock, we're going out to 8 o'clock. We could do that on our own as well. So if you took those three issues out, the Saturday collections, the extended hours, and the increase in rates, how much additional revenue would your firm bring into our city without those three items that we could do on our own? Um, historically, anywhere between 50 and 25 percent. So 50 to 25 percent. 15 to 25 percent of your current revenue. 15 to 25 percent. And how did uh, you come up with that number? I don't want to just pull that. That's just historically what we've done in other cities that we've assumed and we've managed an operation from, um, from in-house to outsource. Because the concern, it seems that many people that have approached me and my colleagues over the last week, mainly over the last week, is that we're paying, you know, and, and the Scranton, I, I don't want to get into the history too much, but Scranton has a long history of being on the losing end of contracts like this. And when we look at all of these questions that we have, and I thank Mr. McGough for listing um, the one very lengthy list that we had. When you look at all the, these different items in here, you have to wonder, how can this not go wrong? When you have all these fees and, and all these concerns that we have here, and there's no guarantee for the city that we'll get an extra dime out of this. Is that correct? Uh, there, there's no guarantee, but I can assure you that there will be, there'll be significant increases in revenue. Well, of course there will. If we're purchasing more meters and extending hours, we're, we're going to have increased revenue. Not necessarily. It, it, I, you asked me a question about our experiences taking over and assuming operation from an in-house to an outsource, 15 to 20 percent. And, and we have, and, and if you want a list of those cities, we can provide that for you. Oh, and and I, the research I've done, I, I, I understand that you do work a lot of cities similar to Scranton, much larger than Scranton, and, and smaller, I believe. But the concern is, you know, obviously bringing in $1.8 million additional a year sounds great. But my question is, and I think this is what a, a lot of people feel, is by the way we're doing it, we're going to hurt business owners, we're going to hurt workers, and we're going to hurt people that come into our city. How do you agree with that assessment on that the increasing of rates 
may hurt business owners, the increasing of hours may hurt business owners? Uh, no, based on the information that I read in this report and based on the need for short-term parking, you're using the rates to, you know, to discourage, you know, the, the, the longer, the long-term parker. And you're, you're, you're using the rates and the hours of operation to move the long, your long-term parker to an off-street location. Currently, and, and, and I know you use the term long-term parker. How, how was that defined? Two hours, three hours? Uh, typically more than, more than two hours, sometimes for four to six hours. Because I, I don't know many people in this city at all that are putting, going to a meter and feeding it for four to six hours a day. We're not that large of a city where people are doing that. Many people You're are not. going to, you know, there, there's many places to park for free. And I don't see how this, the increasing of rates is going to hurt, it's going to stop people from parking long term. Do you have a, a reply? Uh, no, you, you, you can now park, you know, you, you could come in and, and park for a dollar an hour. So two hours is two dollars. Your parking garages or the off street is a lot more expensive. So everybody chooses to park on street. So the long-term parker decides that it's cheaper to park long-term on street than it is on the parking garage. Because when, and the one item that somebody brought up to me the other day was, um, and you may not be familiar with this, the, um, we, have an ammunition, we have an ammunition plant in Scranton where employees for years always parked on the side of the street. And the city one day, wasn't my decision, came in and put up meters. And they metered that entire street to try to get these workers for a dollar an hour, which when you're going to work and you're paying an additional dollar an hour out of your paycheck, ends up to be a lot of money at the end of the week. And what the city or what the employees did was they went out into the neighborhoods and parked and walked in. Mm -hmm. And in the city of Scranton, we have a mall that has ample parking, where if people really wanted to, could generally park in the mall <coughs> and walk down to the place where you work now, like I said, a short-term parker isn't going to go through all that hassle. They're going to park at the meter, go shop for an hour, and leave. But long-term, we ha there is free parking available in downtown Scranton. And I know the garages are, are currently not competitive, and we are, that's why we're in the situation we are with the garages. Um, just a couple more questions that I had here. Um, why wasn't a budget presented prior to this legislation? An um, estimated budget, based on how much money we realized from these meters in the past, how much you would estimate that we would realize um, by the new meters, by the enhanced technology, which, and I, I completely support enhanced meter technology. We, we did submit a budget or estimates on revenues and expenses. There's a, the total number of 1.8, but can you break it down further? Getting, and this gets back to my original question, which is, if we did these items on our own, we're still going to bring in extra money. And the big question for me when making my decision on this vote is, how much additional revenue would your firm actually bring in instead of doing these items, which they will increase revenue, there's no doubt about that, doing them on their own? Because we could, the city could go out and get a loan and purchase meters and spread it out over five years. Good. Possibly. <laughs> we could do things, things of that nature. And and that's where we're at. I'm really struggling with it on how the extra revenue is going to come in besides the meters and besides the increased rates and the increased day. You know, we, we were asked to look at your parking operations and um, we looked at all the data that was provided to us, uh, all the, you know, historical revenues, historical expenses. We looked at the study that was done that was pretty very comprehensive. Again, the recommendations are very clear as it relates to the technology, deployment of technology. Uh, there was an understanding there was a lack of capital. There was an understanding there's a, there's a, there was a need to improve technology, hence the discussion that we got involved, and hence our involvement here. And, and that's what we've done. Okay. Um, just a few more quick questions. Um, big cities such as Philadelphia, I believe maybe New York City, have gone away from traditional meters and gone to kiosk systems. Uh, for instance, when I went to Philadelphia a few months ago, I, I thought it was very convenient where I knew I was going to be going for an hour, an hour and a half meeting. I swiped my credit card or I could have put cash in a kiosk, received the ticket, and put it on my windshield. Meter readers, when they would go by, they would look at the ticket, see if it expired. If they did, they issued a citation. If it didn't, they would, you know, continue. 
has was that considered at all for Scranton? It was, uh, and, and and again, the, the study mentioned that application. the The only concern was that uh, extremely expensive, given the the needs of of kiosks that you would have needed. Uh, if you were to bottom yourself, or the city were to bottom yourself, you're looking at about anywhere between twelve to twelve thousand dollars per per kiosk. They regulate depending on the street or the block face. They could regulate anywhere anywhere between uh, six to eight spaces. Um, the concern with that is the demographics where are typically a complaint is people don't want to walk the four spaces. There's a lot of pushback to that. The other thing, the other option will be well paid by space where you uh, put a space number either on the ground or on a pole. So unsightly um, uh, additional signage. So th the reason why given the number of spaces that we're generating in, in this case uh, the significant amount of revenue for the city the most uh, efficient uh, application and the most effective application which which works is the single space credit card neighbor meter so it, it, it got you the ability to pay with your credit card as you as you do um, at, at a very minimal expense these are mechanisms that are going to be literally dropped into the existing infrastructure you have in place okay I think I have one or two more <laughs> I apologize these no, are also no from from residents as well Now, the expenses that are necessary, who makes that decision? Is that the city or central parking? Um, we provided, you know, a, uh, a detailed budget as to the expenses of the employees, you know, the, what's going to require, you know, the citations. And, you know, we, set, we sit with the city and we debate the budget and we kind of go over the budget and, you know, the administrator or and as, you know, someone who's assigned just, you know, discusses, you know, whether that's, that's a reasonable budget or not. It takes in consideration scheduling. It takes in consideration hours of operations. It takes in, co in consideration the equipment, et cetera. And finally, are, are we liable for payment of the $10,000 a month if there is not extra money realized because of the technology and expertise that um, your company provides? I'm not sure I understand that. How are you? It, is the city liable to pay the $10,000 per month if? the city doesn't realize extra extra revenue um, yes okay that's all I have thank you mr. Loscom do you have any questions for standard parking yes thank you I have a few uh, being, the, being the last guy here <laughs> most of the questions have been asked but uh, I do have a few uh, few that I jotted down as I listened here um, you mentioned a parking study by Rich and Associates on several occasions. I don't know if any of us have ever seen it. Do, did we ever receive a copy in council? I wasn't aware of that. Should have had a green cover on it. It was quite a while ago. Okay. Well, that's something that uh, we have to look at. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're discussing it, and I understand um, different scenarios where you try to keep the people moving off the street and into the garages. Um, you know, that works in a lot of different areas. Again, I'm not sure if it would work in totality here, but my question right now is, are the garage rates here too high at this point? Compared to, you know, municipalities of this size. I've heard a lot of complaints about the the hourly rates at the garages. You know, that's that's a discussion to have with the um, you know with this, with the solicitor as it relates to the rates. We you know right now we're executing based on what we're told to execute based you know from the bondholder's perspective. Um, some garages, you know, our recommendation would be some some garages, some off-street locations have different rate structure. That's that's definitely a possibility, and that's definitely something that needs to be looked at. Um, we've had discussions to that effect, but you know, we've not been successful in in making those changes, or at least suggesting that those changes be made. Does that that study address the garages and the on-street parking? It, it does address uh, the garages, and it does address the garages. Um, the, the you know the, the 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 inventory that's available in the garages I think the the overall public publicly held spaces it accounts for a little bit over 61 percent of all total parking spaces in the city 
the off-street parking spaces of the parking garages, I think the study mentions that their occupancy was at 30%. Uh, the meters were, in some cases, close to 100 in some other places, but overall, well over 60% uh, in the city. Okay. Uh, now, right, uh, right now, we're, we're looking at, at legislation to like a five-year uh, program. Right now, how, how are you working with the city? Are you on a month-to-month -month agreement or? Yeah, we signed a memorandum of understanding. Um, we were asked, uh, you know, at the end of the, of the, end of the, the year that, to, to assume, you know, the operations. Um, I believe from a budgetary perspective, the city did not have a budget to assume, you know, the operations. So we stepped in on a, a memorandum of understanding uh, that was agreed upon by by the attorneys and and that's what we're on to on a month to month okay and just uh, for some reason if this agreement doesn't pass tonight or it's pushed you know to another week or so does that affect you or this plan in any way um well the the agreement with retaining us obviously it's it, it doesn't affect us if it's deferred a week but if it's an agreement that's not going to pass or we're not going to be retained as the operator then yeah, we'll, 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 you know, you, we'll have to agree that we're going to, you know, we're going to part ways. And, um, but, you know, we're, we're working literally at, on a month-to-month -month well, basis. Maybe more directly, I, I apologize. If, if, you know, there's a number of questions and, and we still have to get the answers before we make this decision. We're and, not gonna it's, and it's only delayed a week or so. We're not going to walk away tonight. No, we, we've been here little bit over a month now and um, I don't think that there was the intention to basically you know hold the gun and say it's you know take it or leave it you know we're, we're here for the debate we're here for the discussion uh, and we, we made that effort so okay um, and I don't know if you mentioned it it was I think it was one of the first questions uh, maybe mr. McGough asked about the municipalities that you manage the parking in uh, I don't know if I caught it or anything but is it on street parking too? You manage in all in those? Yeah, it's it's mostly on street parking. Mostly on street parking. Yeah, mostly on street parking. What I mentioned, uh, many of them have the same combination that that you have here. Unfortunately, here there, that there, there's a completely separate contract as it relates to to the off street or the parking garages. Typically, municipalities when they own both, they both you know we manage both both entities. Okay. Uh, and you mentioned 750 meters. I mean, how, how is that determined? Uh, I mean, is that the extent? Are we looking to expand in the future, or is no. this just? I, I think the intent was to keep the capital outlay to a you know to to a reasonable number, um, based on there's 730 and they're listed in the study 732 spaces that are two-hour spaces that are generating the you know the majority of the uh, of the demand so the rest of the spaces are the 10-hour spaces um, and, and that's why the number which is a, a reasonable number we you know we, we would not agree that right now you want to spend uh, or buy a thousand meters when you know the, the majority of it is going to happen within that 732 okay uh, let's see here the other question was uh, and, and I think I don't have a copy of the, the total agreement, but uh, the meters the, with the technology, uh, you know, we've been investigating this for quite, quite some time, for the past several years, and obviously the parking authority didn't want to listen to us at that point. Now we're at this point. But uh, one of the, the, the positive aspects of this technology was the zeroing out of the meters. You put a, you put a dollar in, you're only there five minutes, you pull out, that meter zeroes out. That seemed to play a big factor in the revenue that was generated. What I understand is, is this technology does not include that. You know, believe it or not, that was one of the, um, the recommendations that uh, when, we, when we met, we, we did not agree that that was, um, you know, when you're talking about merchants, when you're talking about goodwill, goodwill, we didn't agree that that was a good practice. We thought, you know, um, does it generate more money? Possibly, but um, from a goodwill perspective, you know, 
why not? You know, there's nothing better when you walk up to a meter and you see time and you say, wow, I, you know, I can, you know, I, I, I can have, I have time. I don't have to put money in the meter. So we, we decided that the cost of the, of the pucks were called the sensors was way too prohibitive, cost prohibitive. You're talking about the, the cost per, per meter to communicate. There was an additional cost to that that was not going to generate significant enough revenues to pay for that expense or to uh, agree to that expense. And we didn't feel that that was, that was warranted. Personally, I, I think the businesses uh, for goodwill would prefer to have the rates where they are now and have a zeroed out meter. It's, it's, it's a costly, it's a costly. Uh, so it's an expense. Uh, that doesn't situation. generate. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Okay. And, and also one of the factors that, that, you know, I think we really liked about the uh, technology is the real time. Uh, showing us the income as it's coming in. And, and this would do that. Pardon? This, this will do that for an additional charge per meter, but, um, and, and I don't know if that's an agreement between all of us or whatever, but, but I think that accessibility for the transparency should be the city clerk's office, the business administrator's office, and the parking office, or the mayor's office. The, the access, it's a web-based system, so the access, I, I think there's a couple of, of web, of webs uh, of access points that can that you can do so it's either you know somewhere in, in city hall or city administrators or whoever that's the designee to to, to view that but it, it will allow you to do that's a web-based system okay um, let's see here. <clears throat> now I understand I, I mean you came in a little bit later in the game the city had uh, requested proposals several times for parking technology. And I believe the last time several companies did not bid on it because they had already gone through the process two, three times and just figured the city was just choking them like, like usual, you know? Um, have you considered, uh, through the city or whatever, rebidding this whole program out. There may be cheaper technology out there from some of these other companies, but they were afraid to bid based on what we had before. If we have a professional management company now, it may be a little bit more, you know, enticing to, to some of these other companies to bid. When we got involved in the game, the, the, the current meter that we're proposing had submitted a bid to, Correct. to the city. Uh, we've reduced that cost per meter about $100 per meter based on the national pricing structure that we have with a number of vendors. Um, a meter-enabled technology uh, or credit card-enabled technology in the marketplace today, they are, they are the, the equipment to, to pick and choose based on some of the requirements and some of the benefits that you discussed as it relates to you know, real-time credit card you know, accessibility of the data, et cetera. So they're the cheapest right now that you can get, or the cheapest price we were able to secure. So they sub resubmitted a bid, reducing that cost significantly. And Both it was based on the one company that was presented to you because the city had bid it. No, we, we looked at, you know, we looked at the kiosk and we could not compare the cost per space from the kiosk was not comparable to the single space meters. In addition, the cost per space uh, of the installation cost and the signage cost for the kiosk which is way too much money to, in comparison. So we, we took that existing bid that the city had gotten and we reduced that. We went out again into the vendors and said, hey, you know, we will be buying these. And based on our relationship, our national pricing relationship, you know, we need to resubmit a new bid. And, and we did that. We submitted it to, to the city as well. And, and we're able to reduce that significantly. Okay. I just believe, you know, under the circumstances and the changes, that uh, you know it should have been rebid again, but that's that's my question, and and I think this is the final question here. We had mentioned employees before and uh, about retaining, and you said you've retained all the employees. I understand there's at least six of them that have been let go. No, that's not correct. Six employees were retained by us. 
There were 12 employees of the parking authority. Uh, no, we only retained six employees from that were working on the meter and meter and meter and for parking enforcement, meter collection, and meter uh, maintenance. But you got <coughs> you guys are in charge of the garages too, and you've left them employees. The, the garages are separate. There's a separate agreement with the with the bondholders. With who? What? With, with the, the bondholders? Bond yeah. So the bondholders basically let them go. Is that, is that at the expense of, a, of, of someone working for $100 an hour from their company? Uh, we, we were hired by the solicitor, by, the, by Mike Washaw, who's, who's overseeing that contract. And, and, and all, he, all we did was just hire to run those garages. Mr. Washaw hired you? Uh, yes. OK. Okay, I just, when we got into this debacle, well, over a year and a half ago or so, for three years we'd been after the uh, parking authority to provide us with budgets. We gave them recommendations on how they could generate revenue in different sources. I mean, we're, we're going right into that right now. And uh, they're very uncooperative. I don't want to see us take that big circle and go back again. That's why we're looking for the transparency. But at the cost, and you know, I might get chastised for this from, from people, but at the cost of employees, the parking authority problems weren't on, the, on the, the people that had their boots on the street. It was the administration of that department. That's why we went after them, not to penalize any of the employees that work there. We know how tough it is to get a job in this area right now. But they've been loyal, and they've been out in the streets, snow, rain, whatever. And, and then to find out that, you know, after we made this vote, we made this decision, we tried to, uh, to make the parking authority better. You know, on a, not on the backs of the employees, but to try and straighten out an administration over there that was very uncooperative. Very, very uncooperative. They'd provide us a one-page bu budget like this here that, uh, you know, my granddaughter in second grade could give me. But the big problem we had with them was lack of transparency, lack of communication, basically lack of respect. And I probably figure some of the employees that had worked under that administration had a, a lack of respect, and they've stuck it out. But the big thing is, if this flies, you know, on this end of it, I guess it's, it's too late. You may be in court on, on the other issue. But uh, I want to see those employees retained. And, that, you know, that's, that's my personal feelings. But I appreciate your coming here tonight. We've asked you a lot of questions. We've run quite a bit over time. Um, but we're going to have to make our decisions uh, based on our questions and answers. And again, I appreciate your coming here. Thank you. Thank you very much. If I could just make one comment. I've never seen the agreement between the receiver and central parking. But it's my understanding that central parking, that that, the, that that agreement for the management of the parking garages is a separate division of central parking. And that the parking meter, the contract tonight, while it's with central parking, this is a totally independent or separate division of central parking. It, so that you do, you would not have anything to do with the management of the garages. That's an entirely separate division. Well, it is central parking, and it's and it's under that umbrella. It, it's the contract where the receivership was signed by central parking, um, prior to the merger between or the acquisition of Standard over Central, and the relate. You know, the, the involvement we've had here has been the Standard parking side, as it relates to this particular agreement. So why they are now merged is to, th that the both corporations have merged and now it's just one corporation, that the management of the garage has nothing to do with this contract. Now with this contract that's in front of you.
Well, I would like to thank you very much, Mr. Rogers, Mr. Scoggins, and Mr. Valera, uh, for coming in and partaking in this caucus and answering our questions. And if no one has any further questions, this caucus is adjourned. Please remain standing for a moment of silent prayer or reflection as we remember the servicemen and women who are stationed around the globe who continue to fight for our freedom and our way of life and also those in our community who passed in the, in the past week. Please. Mr. McGough? Mr. Rogan? Here. Mr. Lascom? Here. Mr. Joyce? Here. Mrs. Evans? Dispense with the reading of the minutes. Third order 3A agenda for the zoning hearing board to be held February 13th, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Are there any clerk's notes? Not at this time, Mr. Joyce. Thank you. Do any council members have announcements tonight? I have none. Sorry. Oh, I thought you said you have one. <laughs> I'm sorry. If you didn't want to make the announcement that you were going to the table to legislate. Oh. Okay. Do that now? Yeah. Yeah, I think that I would do it now. I, I could wait to motions if you would like. Um, yeah, okay. I'll, I'll do it now then. Um, I would like to make a motion to table item 6a and item 7b regarding the parking meters we have to do they should each be separate motions to be voted on instead of combining them thank you attorney Hughes I would make a motion to table item 6a second um, the reason for tabling them obviously and I, I see there are a lot of people here to talk about these issues today um, obviously there are a lot of unanswered questions and many of you are upset about this proposal as I am um, if there were a final vote today I would have to vote no um, and I think many of my colleagues likely share that same sentiment but I think by waiting a week two weeks maybe things could be ironed out maybe they can't and maybe it will be voted down anyways but I think right now um, it is, isn't the time to push this through Um, as far as uh, the legislation in sixth order, um, there were, a, we can't amend it tonight if it's tabled. And there were amendments that were being considered to the, the legislation. Plus, if it were amended tonight and we voted on the amended part, there would still be a third reading 
um, next week. And if we were to table the one in seventh order, then both of them would be in seventh order next week. So I'm, I, I would be more in favor of moving this one forward um, until next week with the amendments that are proposed and then voting on both of them for final passage or not passage uh, next week. So I guess what I'm saying is I'm not in favor of tabling this particular piece of legislation. I, uh, and I don't want to debate it. We talked about right. this earlier. Um, I, I view the I don't know if this is but until the motion is seconded, there shouldn't be any discussion on it. If there's no second, then the motion would fail for one of the seconds. Mr. There was a second. second. Oh, I'm there sorry. I didn't, I didn't hear that. I'm sorry, Jack. Yes. That's okay. I, I believe that both pieces of legislation are is of such similar nature that they both need to be placed on the table and, and at the same time. Okay. If there's no further uh, discussion, let's vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. The ayes have it and so moved. I will also make a motion to table item 7B. Second. Second. And this is for the same reasons as the previous item. This one I agree with tabling. <laughs> All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. If there are no further announcements, move into uh, fourth order, which is citizens' participation. And our first speaker tonight is tax collector Bill Courtright. Thank you, Council. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, You're welcome. My main reason for coming here this evening was to ask you to table the legislation. Although I don't currently sit on Council, many people still recognize me from when I did. And this last week, I've had several people come to me with questions and concerns. Now, I came in when Mr. McGough was speaking, and Two of the things that he brought up were the major concerns for people. Nobody is in favor of raising the rates, but the two things that they were most concerned about were the Saturday hours and were 8 o'clock at night, especially the bars and restaurants when very busy between 5 and 8. Uh, they said bad enough that their patrons would have to pay more, but in the event that their dinner ran late or whatever, and they come out, now they got a nice ticket on their car. Uh, so that was my reason for coming here this evening. And one question, because I know you've had a long night already. Uh, one gentleman asked me, he's interested in possibly opening a business in one of the parking garages, vacant storefronts. And he said his decision probably would be contingent on would he or his employees, if they open the business in the parking garage, be afforded uh, a discounted rate or some free parking spaces? And the same for his, his patrons. Uh, told him I didn't know the answer to that question. Probably not. Uh, but that I would ask you. But that, that was a major concern for him about moving into one of the, uh, one of the empty uh, storefronts. Uh, that's about all I have. I appreciate you uh, letting me speak. It's a lot easier sitting on this side, guys, than on that side. So good luck with whatever you decide. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ron Elman. Thank you, Council. You know, year after year, I, I, you, you've watched me stand here and jump up and down and shout and yell and accuse you all of being in a, in a bubble and not know what's going on. But when I sit down, I, I, I realize you just, you, you just haven't been dealt a, a, a good hand. Ten years of uh, the worst mayor the city's ever had. A, 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 a media administration that is just just consist of a bunch of Scopalettis and McGowans that, that, that have just, they mess up, they end up with a better position in a race. It, it, 
I listen to these three men, and if you had, in my opinion, this would be the, the end of downtown. I've talked to so many people, they're either going to end up parking at the bar and getting, getting in problems there, or they're going to avoid it. I talked to a fellow that had a place for rent in Oliphant for two years, and he said he had a call this week on it and rented it. I phoned him about a garage that was was vacant. I, but I, I, I guess the city comes by it naturally. Today, I heard on the news the governors declared war on the churches and the bingo and the gambling and all, all the enterprises churches use to, to help people put food on the table. I don't, I don't know how he plans to, to, to help people. He, he's taken everything away from us. I talk to people just almost daily. They've lost their, their medical. They can't afford their co-pays. This is the state we're supposed to come, come to. Well, well, uh, 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 gas Industries has bought the, the governor. I, th I think that the, the main reason he doesn't want the, uh, the, the churches and the, uh, their gambling proceeds is to protect his lottery and his sale, which is only going to be for his own financial and political enhancement. Uh, to get back on the subject, it, it's, it's time that council acknowledge the fact the nonprofits have destroyed our city. They have stolen away the heart of, of, of our, our tax base downtown. You just won't, you won't attack them, but their Achilles heel is what the state has written down. They have outgrown the five requirements in the state nonprofit charity act. Otherwise, all you got is bankruptcy. You cannot keep going to the people out here year after year with, say it's a tax increase and we're borrowing money. Pell has failed us miserably. But uh, this isn't my opinion. This is from a lot more knowledgeable people than, than I am that, are, that know what's going on in this city. The borrowing and the tax raising is just, it's, it's just ruined us. The University of Scranton's in the child education business. And look what they've done to our school system. They've stolen millions of dollars of our tax money that should go to our children. Two of you all up there taught these children. What kind of future they have in this city? I, t I talked to a young man working at the giant market the other day. He's a senior in school and he's leaving the city. He said when he gets out of school, he probably won't come back here. There's, no, there's nothing here for people. This nonsense of fifty hundred thousand dollars jobs in the future is just blowing smoke in everybody's ear. Even if they had, if, if 20 of them came, they're not going to live in the city with hundred-year-old houses and no sidewalks and no curbs and floods everywhere. They'll be up at Clark Summit or someplace. It, it, the time has come that you just have got to face the fact you cannot keep on raising our taxes. You got, what, 3,000 houses in foreclosure that are abandoned and left? Look, I keep talking about my neighborhood has declined something terrible. It has just hit bottom around there. I've chased two guys out of my garage the past, what, well, two years now. I've caught two of them in their stealing. Thank you, Mr. Elmer. There, I can't walk down sidewalks because there's no curbs. There's cars parked everywhere on the sidewalks with all four wheels. Uh, the children are in the streets in the morning. Nobody seems to care. These Thank just, you, Mr. Elman. Your time these, is up. I know these tonight. are all problems, but... I know, but if you could... Uh, let, let me just say this in leaving. 
I realize you five people uh, are deserving my respect more than, than, than I give it a lot of times. And I realize that, that you guys have, have given a lot of your time and, and deserve better. But I, 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 wherever I go, there's just... Excuse me, Mr. There's Joyce. Just there's hardships Mr. around here that there doesn't need to be. There shouldn't be. Excuse you me, need Mr. Almond. Do something about I have the to stop your universities time. and the phony nonprofits, or you need to file bankruptcy and give us homeowners a break. It's Thank just you, got Mr. to be Allman. over. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much, Lee Morgan. Good evening, Council. Good evening. Um, Good evening. Yes, the first thing I have is um, I've done requests to Council under right to know. I've received no response um, on Section 312 and 313 of the Home Rule Charter. I'd like a letter from the City Clerk uh, telling me what information they actually have. I was given one subpoena, but uh, you know I'm trying to get some closure on that and find out. And the other thing is. I asked for uh, records in regards to the voting record of council from about 1975 till now. Um, and there was a reason for that. And I, I received a reply that it had cost me $300. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to come to council and scan those documents with my own scanner so that uh, I'd have them available to me. And if the council doesn't uh, want to uh, do that, I'd like to also receive a, re uh, a letter from the city clerk in regards to that too so that I can go to the court and ask the court to issue an order to give me the right to scan those documents but I can't do anything until I get a reply so I'm I'm waiting and I was wondering Mr. Joyce if uh, you could try to uh, help me to uh, you know rece receive a reply Mr. You, to, oh go ahead I, I was going to respond uh, your request should be sent to the right to know officer. For it did the go to the right to know officer, and then I dropped the right. I dropped one off down here as a courtesy because that's where it was coming anyhow. And the last time I dropped one off, it went through the law department, and it came down to council. And there's just a lack of transparency here, and I'm having a real hard time receiving. Now there's a procedure to be followed, and I did follow that procedure. So that's why I'm saying that there's a problem here, and we need to find a way through it. And the other thing I'd like to say is um, on the subject for tonight, um, you know, I, I had gone and I hope that this does not pass council, okay? Uh, this whole parking deal is just wrong for the city. I think that uh, this, this, any decisions on this should be done after the election. And I also believe that <clears throat> this should all be done in-house. We vilified Mr. Scopoletti. I had an opportunity to talk to him about two months before he left his position. And a lot of the things that I hear these gentlemen say, he discussed with me in his office. So, you know, just uh, because somebody receives an appointment politically to run any, any uh, for lack of a better terminology, business in the city doesn't mean that they're not capable. And I think he took a lot of heat because Honestly, the city built those garages, and they knew they couldn't pay for them. And, I, and when we listen to these gentlemen give their presentation, we're paying for everything. So why aren't we just going to do it in-house? Can't the, can't the council and the mayor come together and, and create a, uh, an entity which can uh, legitimately run these? Um, because, you know, when it, it reminds me of the South when you read after the Civil War how the carpetbaggers came down and just sacked the South. And we keep privatizing everything, and we keep talking about the great benefit is to the city, but we don't have enough money to run our city, and we're giving revenue to third parties. It doesn't make any sense, okay? And when you start talking about downtown business owners, I really think they're struggling because of the economy. I really do, and I, I think there's a lot of problems here. And I think that we can find solutions for our problems in-house. And I think what we have going on here is political reality and fiscal reality coming together. The only question is, which reality are we going to accept? 
because evidently for a long time the residents of this city have taken political reality over everything else and closed their eyes to anything else taking place here. And now it's come to the point where we say really very silly things like, uh, you know, if a receiver came into the city, they'd raise your taxes. Well, it's evident that the city's going to have to pay its debts no matter what. But when we take a look at how we're going about the process of paying our bills, it's not conducive to recovery because you just had to sit through the hearings with the judges and see that what's said here and what was said in the courtroom, two different things. And then when we see, like the Rule 312 and 313 in the Home Rule Charter that I've asked for information on, okay, that most certainly tells you what powers council has and whether they've exercised them or not. And then my question going back to 1975, I'd like to see the voting record of every councilman to see who actually was trying to help the city and who wasn't. And I think that's very important, especially in election year. And the last thing I have here is, you know, I hope a lot more candidates run for every office in the city, mayor, council, school board. If you've never run before, put your name on the ballot, get out there, mix it up. There's a lot of good ideas out there. And the last thing I have is that I hope the League of Women Voters does debates throughout the city and maybe ECTV, maybe the tax group, maybe other parties, because we need a lot of discussions in this city to find our way. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Morgan. Bob uh, Bolas. Good evening, Council. Bob Bolas, Scranton. Good evening. Good evening. Well, it's kind of sad to say, but, you know, Scranton, Scranton, here we go again. You know, we have a cash cow, our meters. And what do we do? Now we want to take them and give that away. Scranton's been nothing but a giveaway of every asset we have in the city. Let's reflect back on the Scranton Municipal Golf Course. With interest, about $4 million. That was the been escrowed for the Parks and Recreation. Last summer, the kids stood outside with a water hose rather than go to a park. Why? Because Scranton squandered $4 million. That was earmarked perpetually to stay in escrow and only the interest used for parks and recreation. Historically, this city doesn't know how to manage its assets. It's one of the most poorly run businesses in the United States. I mean, we're already the laughing stock of the country, paying minimum wage to our uh, employees. You have to turn around and, you know, examine your conscience here. It's time. Because you people, this administration, do not know what a business is. You don't know how to run a business. And that's what this city is. It's a business. The only difference between you and a real business is we in the business world can't tax. We have to figure it out how to get our money from a bank or other means of creativity. There's no creativity here. It's just pretty much, well, let's take the meters or raise your taxes 80%. In all the years I've come here, not once has this council effectively gone after the KLZs and nonprofits by creating and I'm talking creativity of a public service fee, a 1% fee across everybody in this city, including the KLZs and nonprofits, would bring in millions of dollars. That's utiliza utilization of your assets. But we're cowards here because we let the bullies bully us around. Because none of our administrators or people want to take charge. And now's the time to take charge. Mr. Rogan, last week, I thought it was kind of comical, actually. I read it in the paper, really. Is that you said, for the love of your city, you shouldn't be here for the money. My suggestion is that everybody takes a fee here, give it back. Give it to the police department, give it to the fire department, give it to some of the charities. We come here, we love our city, and we don't get a dime out of it. To the contrary, we get taxed. We get the living heck pounded out of us time after time after time. And we're kind of sick of it. And, uh, you know, you just got to turn around and take a hard look at where we're going. You know, on the meters here, 
doing what they're doing. They're a business. They're showing you how they make money. Copy what they do, and you'll make money. But don't just give it away. We gave away the Southside Center, sports complex. You still have 500 grand plus that somebody pays you a dollar a year at the old ice box. That's not creativity, that's pure stupidity on the part of our administrative people. It's a disgrace, it's a mockery. And then to think senior citizens and people have to suffer because of the incompetence. And it went on time after time, councils, past, present, I hope not in the future, and administrations, past, present, and not in the futures, that things get a lot better. People have come here, they pleaded their case, it's fallen off that years. If you want to do something, borrow the money. Go to a bank, borrow against your meters. You still have your equity. You still have a way to run it as a business and pay it back. These guys aren't here to say we're nice people. They're for here for themselves. They're not here for you, me, or anybody in this room. They're a business, and that's how a business is run. Copy it. Pay attention to it. Look at everybody that's profiteered off this city. Professional fees, no fee agreements. Nothing else that went on here and we all sat back and were made a fool out of. As far as the mayor's salary goes, 80 grand to run this city is a gift to have somebody even want to come in here and take on where we are. And Administer what? Administer the city? If they're credible, remember, for 50000 look what you got for the last 12 years. We're broke, we look like fools, and we're acting like fools. It's time now, step up to the plate, pay the people what they're worth, and maybe you'll get an administrator that'll work with a council, but more importantly, work for the people here, and so, instead of a self-serving government. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Mr. You. Bolas. <clears throat> Attorney Moses. Good evening, Council. I just want to thank Council and the Scranton residents and business people for the opportunity to come in and speak tonight. Um, my name is Tony Moses. I'm an attorney. Uh, my offices are in Kingston and Luzerne County. Um, I do work up here. I represent um, Bob Bolas. Actually, I also represent several of his companies. And the uh, reason I'm here is just talk about a couple of items in the in the allotted time. Uh, the first one I wanted to bring up was was the parking meters. Um, I, I I personally haven't reviewed the proposal that was addressed tonight. I haven't sat down and had a chance to review it. Uh, neither has my client. However, uh, Mr. Bowles has expressed to me uh, he, does, he does have an interest in possibly making an offer regarding the meters. Uh, you know, the reasons for this is he's a lifelong resident as well as a, a long-time business person in the city of Scranton. Uh, he knows, I guess he's known to people, he, know, he knows how to successfully run a business. Um, he has a track record for successful businesses. And also as a, as a resident, somebody who's required to be in the city, come into the city, he's been subject to the meters and the parking laws and he's, he's paid tickets. I was with him a week ago and we got a ticket and he paid it himself. So uh, he feels he'd bring a unique perspective as somebody with his business experience, he feels he'd be able to possibly make an offer that could generate money for the city and, and be realistic and be, and be a smart way to run it and generate some money for the city, as well as administer them in a way that would be fair to the people using them and, you know, allow them to leave the city with a, with a desire to come back and not, you know, not do anything, anything to be, you know, unfair with the meters as he himself has been, been subject to them his whole life and knows what that's like. Uh, however, now it is, it is an interest. We'd have to review the current offer and then you know he'd have to make a decision to see if it's something that would be realistic to him but it is, is something he's expressed an interest in. Um, another thing I wanted to address uh, I guess this was publicized a few weeks ago but uh, Mr. Bolas um, named the city in a lawsuit uh, subject of the suit was over a 16-foot deeded waterway I, um, I, I filed it so just a couple of things I wanted to touch on and you can 
review these things hundreds of times and once it's filed go back and say I wish this was more clear I wish that was more clear but basically the controversy is over a, a 16 foot deeded waterway and uh, according to my client uh, the city's denied ownership of it despite a, a title search which he which he secured that showed otherwise he he did he still does actually have a standing offer of fifty thousand dollars to buy the land uh, his main concern is his, his property his personal property is adjacent to the waterway and he has some safety concerns it's not necessarily a danger but it can be if it's not maintained properly and he'd like to purchase it so that he can get in there have it inspected do the proper maintenance off it uh, do the proper maintenance on it and again he has a standing offer for it and he feels the fifty thousand dollars coming into the city would would be fair um, again he does have a title shirt so in the city owns it however uh, according to him there's been denial on the ownership of it so he'd like to get get to the bottom of that and also um, my our research indicated that if if the city owned it at one time according to the title title search then dispose of it uh, and let, unless this is proven wrong our research indicated that council would have to approve any kind of transfer of city-owned property I, I believe so if if that if it was sold or disposed of we would figure that would probably have to be evidence somewhere if that was if that was the case and that's really really all I main two areas I wanted to touch on tonight thank you all right thank you thank you our next speaker is Doug Miller good evening council Doug Miller Scranton good evening um, before I begin I just have one question uh, can this proposal uh, be viewed uh, publicly in councils uh, or in the city clerk's office for the uh, interested uh, public to, to take a look at? Are you speaking about the parking meter proposal? Regard, yeah, I'm sorry, in regards to the uh, standard parking agreement. Yes, that's available in council's office. Okay, I appreciate that. There were some uh, interested people that did uh, contact me uh, with that uh, question, and uh, I'm glad we got clarification on that. You know, I do appreciate the uh, standard parking uh, individuals coming in tonight in a public setting uh, to discuss uh, the issues of the parking authority in the future of uh, this plan uh, taking the time to answer your questions uh, I may see this a little differently than, than uh, some people here this evening um, I think a lot of this comes down to two very simple simple points we either want to go back in time to the day to the days of uh, fiscal mismanagement lack of transparency one-page high school class officer budgets that led us to the financial disaster that we're in today or we can go in a new direction that alleviates the burden on the residents of this city by bringing in the nation's largest parking operator to come in to generate revenue so that the city's not on the hook for over hundred million dollars in bond payments those are the two things that we're juggling right now and there's certainly some questions that still need to be answered I, I have questions myself uh, one of them is uh, a question that was brought up by Council Malaskom tonight, and that's in regards to the employees. We understand that six of them will be coming back and employed by Standard Parking, but we also know that there's six other individuals that at this time aren't being employed. And I don't feel that the employees should be punished due to the mismanagement of those that ran this authority recklessly. Um, they're the ones that should be punished. That's why they're no longer here. But those who got up every day and went to work just like each and every one of us does every day, shouldn't lose their job and I think that before we go ahead and vote on this deal that that's a major question that should be addressed and that we need to determine why these employees aren't being kept on because I don't feel it's fair to them they didn't do anything wrong they did their job they did what they were told to do those who didn't do their job were the ones that caused the mess that we're in today uh, you know my whole issue on this is that I don't want to see the city liable for having to make these bond payments that's going to happen if we don't go in a new direction if we don't implement some sort of program to generate revenue that we need if we don't come up with some sort of new enhancement to bring in the revenue whether it's through parking meters or parking garages or parking ticket revenue to make these bond payments I think the residents need to understand that it's what will entail is between two or three million dollars coming out of our city budgets each year to make these payments but most importantly you're looking at excessive tax increases that certainly we saw our taxes go up 22 percent this year something we didn't want to have happen 
But when you have tax increases in the amounts of between 80 and 100 percent, it makes that 22 percent tax increase look inviting. But that's not a direction we want to go in. That's going to happen if we don't take action. You're going to look at, whether you want to believe it or not, it's re we like to talk about reality here. The reality is you will see an 80 percent tax increase. You will see a 100 percent tax increase because the money has to come from somewhere. And that's my other question is, if we don't take action, where's the money coming from? We all know money doesn't grow on trees, and the city certainly doesn't have the ability to go out there and pick money from the sky. We need money. Do we go with this plan, or do we go and we tax the people and place the burden on them? We don't want to see that happen. But that's going to happen if we don't make a plan and move forward and do something to, to prevent that from happening. You know, we hear about bankruptcy. Well, at the same, but then on the other end of our mouths, we want to talk about all the services that we're grateful for, our police protection, our fire protection, our DPW. You're not going to see any of that with a bankruptcy because, yes, taxes will go up 125 percent. And, no, we don't have any say over it. So these are all things that before we come up and we make statements, we have to take into account. And that's where I'm coming from. My main issue is looking out for the residents of this city, myself, and the next generation. I know the debt that's been left down. I don't want to see it continue to pile up to affect the next generation and the next generation after that because that's what's going to happen if we don't take action with this parking authority. Council had to make very difficult decisions over the last summer to get us to the point that we're in tonight. That's why it was critical for the recovery plan to be passed in August, because without that recovery plan in place, we wouldn't even have standard parking here tonight. We wouldn't have the ability to go to a bank and ask for a loan to make payroll. Remember, we had employees making $7.25 an hour due to the fiscal mismanagement of this administration. And so tonight, when we stand forward and we make comments, we need to take all this into account, that this isn't about punishing businesses, punishing the residents. This is, try to, this is trying to alleviate the burden. Believe me, I'm not comfortable with meter increases in rates. I'm not comfortable with Saturday hours. These are all questions that are going to be discussed before we vote. But we need to take into account that this is about protecting the people and protecting our taxpayers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Gary Lewis. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Gary Lewis, I'm a resident of the downtown. Um, tonight, I wanted to talk about the you know, proposed um, meter contract, and I think you guys did a fantastic job uh, during the caucus. I was, I was very impressed with the questions that were brought up, especially uh, the way Mr. Murgoff laid into the actual cost of the contract. Um, I do think that there are a couple very important points to note. and specifically around the fixed costs with the contract. There's the $10,000 management fee, the $7,000 essentially meter rental or, or meter payment, um, and then there's the, the vehicle fee of $895. And then during the, the caucus, I came up that um, the actual additional costs related to credit card processing and data downloading uh, works out to about $9 per meter was the, was the number that um, I believe the standard parking representative gave. That's an additional $13,000 a month if, if, we, if we go that route. So when you just add up those fixed costs alone, that's a $32,000 monthly payment that, that's fixed. And on top of that, you have the 10% of the citations, you have the salary, you have the benefits, and you have all these different um, expenses, an office expense. I'm sure they're going to charge you for everything that they can. Um, it, it seems like... We started off on a good foot. We went looking for a third party to outsource uh, the, the parking uh, meter management so that we could actually raise some of the additional revenues that we have in the 2013 budget. But it seems like this isn't the best contract for the city. Um, I, I do encourage you to, to continue to pursue it and to keep looking at, at the details because I think there was a lot hidden um, in this contract that, that you don't catch at first glance. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was the, the state of the Scranton Parking Authority garages. I live in the Connell Building, um, and obviously the Connell Garage is attached to the Connell Building. Since the SPA was dissolved, essentially, and the receiver was appointed, the maintenance has fallen off drastically. And we now know that's because they got rid of the six maintenance employees that the SPA employed. Um, there are a number of problems. They aren't, aren't cleaning up after the birds that get into the garage. There are 11 burned out lights in, in the Connell garage. There's only about 60 lights total. There are entire sections of the rear part of that garage that are pitch black at night, which isn't exactly a very safe situation. 
Um, the stairways at multiple garages are full of garbage and human feces and, and bedding supplies for some, some homeless. Um, you know, this morning we had, we had a meeting also with Standard. It was a number of downtown residents and downtown businesses. And one of the individuals that was at the meeting brought up the fact that he reached out to um, Central Parking and, and complained about the lack of maintenance, the lack of snow removal, the, the lack of care in the common areas of the, the, the Linden Garage. And he said his, his feedback was that if, if he's that concerned about it, he, he can take the initiative himself and, and clean it up. That's not what we pay rent for. That's not what we're forking out more than $100 a month for. Um, if you're leasing a space, you're forking out substantially more than that. It seems a little rude um, that they've just completely knocked off the maintenance. Um, the final thing that I wanted to touch on was the actual, the contract itself. And was, was the contract ever put out to bid or did we just select central parking? Mr. Hughes, that would be uh, up to the receiver, correct? Well, I'm talking for no, no, the no, uh, no. meter. This, I, I don't, I, I believe it was set out to bid. That would be up to the mayor and the administration to bid it. Okay. Uh, then have the controller review it, and then the bid would be awarded uh, by the mayor. Okay. Um, the only thing, when that's all done, then the solicitor's office drafts the contract does the enabling legislation, the ordinance, and then sends it down to council. I reviewed the contract. I had several comments on it for it to be revised. It was revised according to my comments. Um, so council has, takes no part, or has nothing to do with the bidding process. I understand But that. I believe that it was bid from, was. What, from what I've seen. Okay. Now, now that you uh, mentioned that I, I I actually do believe it was put out to bid too because I remember that was discussed in uh, a meeting at one point. Okay, that's all I have tonight. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Thank you. Our <laughs> next speaker is Ozzy Quinn. Ozzy Quinn, uh, Scranton Taxpayer. Association. Good evening. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Uh, a year and a half ago, Jack Oscom, I met with Jack Oscom and uh, the owner of S Street Smart. And, uh, you know, Mr. Doherty dr uh, dra dragged his feet uh, so that he could keep care of his boys over at the parking authority. And we're to talk about bidding and whatnot. I think that was the company to go with, and now we're here a year and a half later where we could have been collecting a revenue if they only listen. Now, uh, you know, we, we sit here, and uh, Ron Elman's talking about the neighborhoods, and he is so right. And you know what? The Scranton Times, Scranton Tribune have been big supporters and cheerleaders of Mr. Doherty for 10 years. As a matter of fact, the financial campaign reports show that the publishers, who are the owner of the Times, had made payments to each of Doherty's campaigns. Now, here we are, we're in situations where now they're trying to spin this around to look like the majority up there, and Mrs. Evans is, is, is a bad boy. And uh, why? Because they know that they're, 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 they're their, their idol, Mr. Doherty, is going down the tubes. He's not going to run anymore. And this is a shame that, uh, that our city has to put up with the one town newspaper and it just keeps on, keeps on knocking the city council and knocking the city council. So it makes you, the people start to think, what is that city council doing? Why are they, why did they ever elect them for? And the reason was, it was Doherty. It was it was Scranton Times with Doherty, Doherty, Doherty. You you know that he borrowed. You know what? He didn't raise taxes. He he spent hundred millions of dollars. He didn't raise taxes. What did he do? He borrowed. He borrowed with his credit card. Pay off the other credit card. And what happened? They didn't say anything. They didn't criticize him. And here we are, ten years later. 
Now, this might not sound too sexy, but I am with the uh, with the, uh, the president of the uh, of the uh, Taxpayers Association, and uh, right now in Harrisburg, and you wouldn't know it, but you know, Mark Twain says. Uh, to paraphrase him, you're, if you buy the Scranton Times, uh, if you don't buy the Scranton Times, you're uninformed. If you buy the Scranton Times, you're misinformed. So the fact is that I think that we have Act 75, Senate Bill Act 75, and House Bill Act 75 in the state legislation, what has to do with the elimination of school property taxes. The total elimination of school property taxes. Wouldn't that be nice that you people could have some room to breathe? Okay? And that, and I, I urge you to get in touch, please, someone who is the, uh, Mr. Joyce, your finance chairman, with Mr. Haggerty and Mr. Flynn and sit down and talk about this bill. Okay? Mr. Blake is going his own way in regards to uh, the boroughs and the municipalities outside the city. And uh, I don't know if he cares too much for the city. But let's start worrying about the city. Let's try to get it back on track. And, you know, I know you get to take a lot of abuse, and I really feel sorry, you know, to see a lady like Mrs. Evans who put all her time and into a situation, and they abused her. They abused her because she, she, she took disability because of her back. They abused her because she did anything to fight Doherty. Every time, $35 million to repair the garage, the condo building. She voted against it, abused. And you know what? The tenants in the condo building, they don't pay any, any uh, what's the name, any rate, and they keep their cars there all day. Who owns these park, uh, the parking authority? It's, uh, it's, it's true. And you can check that out, please, okay? And I just want to let you know that there's a lot going on here. There's no investigative reporting. No investigative reporting. Forget about it. What's ever handed to the Times, they read or they go back and they're told what to do. And that's all there's to it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Gregory Evans. Good evening, Council. Gregory Evans, resident of Scranton, small business owner in downtown Scranton. Um, Good evening. I have a prepared statement, but real quick before, um, I want to reiterate something that Gary Lewis met, just mentioned, that um, you know, it's commendable that Scranton has gone out of their way to actually seek a, a national company who is an authority in parking, which is great. But as it stands, this is a bad deal. So, but on to my prepared statement, please. Um, with the, support of the, with the support of fellow downtown business owners, many who stand here with me tonight, I began circulating, circulating a petition on Tuesday in opposition to the rate increases, the times lengthened, and the days extended in regard to the parking meters. I have with me right now nearly 1,000 signatures. Just in the past three days, we were able to acquire. And this, is an, this opposition is based upon insufficient data supporting this will not create an exodus of downtown Scranton, the economic and cultural hub of our city. The concern, of course, is that it will deter businesses from investing in people living in and customers patronizing businesses in downtown Scranton. I had the privilege of attending a roundtable discussion this morning with Central Parking, its management, and the city business, uh, business administrator. The most intriguing data shared was that the parking garages average under 30% occupancy while parking meters are at almost 100% occupancy. This tells me that the most practical opportunity for increasing revenue would be to focus on the 70% vacancy rate of the parking garages, not punishing the people who actually occupy the meters currently. While we all know the meters are often occupied by downtown employees because of the high rates of the parking garages, we could increase overall parking revenue by offering a discounted rate. With a 70% vacancy rate, some, some money is better than none. Another concern is the, the parking of vehicles with, with blue municipal license plates that do not pay the meters and do not receive parking violations. 
while these vehicles sit at meters for hours, zero revenue is being generated. Let's somehow get those vehicles into the garages too, so the meters can collect proper revenue. I understand this legislation tonight is regarding the meters and not the parking garages, but the big picture is the effect of parking in downtown Scranton, generating revenue, and the spending of our tax dollars. We all understand Scranton is in desperate need of increased revenue sources, but we also want to be certain that decisions being made aren't penny rich and pound foolish. The fear is that the parking meter increases will be a deterrent. If this is true, and we don't know because we don't have sufficient data regarding the effects of the proposed changes, there will be a domino effect. Businesses will relocate, residents will relocate, downtown will be vacant. Even worse, they might relocate outside of Scranton. This would be catastrophic to any budget or recovery plan. With this perspective and with the, the many questions from the caucus earlier this evening, I thank you for tabling the legislation which would accept the parking agreement under, until proper. <clears throat> thank you for ta tabling the legislation um, until there is proper data co collected and until hopefully another caucus can be held. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Kim Howard. Our next speaker is Daniel Danielle Dolan. Our next speaker is Leslie Collins. Good evening. I'm Good evening. Leslie Collins, and I am the executive director of Scranton Tomorrow. I'd like to thank you um, this evening for giving us the opportunity to have a discussion with you. And I would like to speak on behalf of the downtown business district, as well as our Main Street uh, Scranton particip participants. Earlier today, Scranton Tomorrow facilitated a meeting with Standard Parking and Ryan McGowan from the city's uh, administration office and downtown uh, representatives including business owners, building owners, as well as new downtown residents. Uh, my purpose of coming this evening uh, was first and foremost to ask you to please table the legislation so that we could investigate the, the documents in more detail um, and provide comment. So I would like to thank you on behalf of the businesses. I'm sure that they are all grateful that you um, did listen to the concerns that obviously people have been calling you with. And um, we thank you for tabling the, or tabling the legislation. Secondly, I was coming so that I could give you feedback from the meeting that we held this morning. The meeting proved to be very productive, allowing for a presentation by standard parking and an open forum for our attendees to ask relevant questions, to voice their concerns, and to offer alternative suggestions as well. I believe it was evident that the majority of the, of the, majority of the participants welcome improvements, such as new meters, credit card capabilities, as well as smartphone payment options. However, with that said, it was also quite evident that our meeting was the first attempt for open dialogue, providing an arena for those who are the lifeline of our downtown to have a voice. When formulating policy, we feel it is vital for those who will potentially be affected by such legislation to have a voice and that they are able to offer valuable information which most definitely should be taken into consideration. Additionally, standard parking provided us with information regarding new meter capabilities, uh, the training process for meter ambassadors, and the ability to monitor park parking trends and revenue, all of which we feel <coughs> have a positive potential. Yet we feel strongly that more information is needed for the justification of extended monitoring on weekdays, 
the proposed addition of monitoring on Saturdays as well. Uh, this point in the legislation will most, most definitely have an impact on our visitorship. It will also have a great impact on our independent retailers, our restaurateurs, our cultural venues, as well as our public facilities. Um, I thank you once again for recognizing those, those are issues with the legislation. We also um, encourage further discussion to be held on the increased meter rates as well. We realize that there is a distinction between the management of the public garages and the on-street parking management. The consensus shows that this lends to somewhat of a frustrating uh, situation for many. Ideally, we would like to see a more synergistic relationship between the receivership of the garages and the management company that potentially would take over the, the on-street parking. Standard Parking has agreed, if in fact their contract it, it is um, put through, they have agreed to meet with Scranton tomorrow and our downtown business community on a monthly basis to continue the process of open communication. We would like to invite representatives of City Council to attend those meetings on a monthly basis, and we also would like to ask um, Mike Washoe, the receiver for the parking garage, to participate in those meetings as well. I will be communicating um, further information as we move for forward in the process um, on those potential meetings. Um, realizing the importance of public input, there was unanimous consent at our meeting this morning by those who participated that we would come and ask you to table the information or to table the legislation. And the purpose for that is that I know that, um, Jack, you had brought up the parking study. And that was presented to us today. However, there was not sufficient time to review that document. So we would like time to actually, we will be setting up an immediate meeting with our downtown businesses. We welcome council to participate if you are able. And we will have a work session and work through the the uh, documents as well as the parking study and then we certainly will come back to you with our findings and our recommendations gentlemen thank you very much for tabling the legislation thank you, thank you. <clears throat> our next speaker is Les Spindler Good evening, Council Les Spiller, city resident, homeowner, taxpayer. Good evening. Uh, Good evening. I, too, am glad that those two pieces of legislation were tabled tonight. Those two pieces of legislation cannot be passed the way they are now. The hours from 8 to 8, from Monday to Saturday, will absolutely kill businesses downtown. I was speaking to the owner of uh, Mother's Table yesterday, and he said he does very good hours on Saturday, and though that having parking Paying for park on Saturday, he said, would, would kill his business. He'd probably have to close up. And that's a great little restaurant downtown. And uh, I've worked downtown for over 20 years now. And I was against the, the meters going up to a dollar. And I've, I've seen parking diminish on the streets since it went up to a dollar. You look at the 200 block of Franklin, the 200 block of Mifflin, you can count the cars on one hand that are parked there during the day. Sometimes there are no cars on those blocks. Uh, the block of Linden where McCarthy Tires is, there's never cars parked on that block. I defy anybody to go by there during the day and find cars parked there. People cannot afford it. Just recently, the 100 block of Penn Avenue where Mother's Table is, you couldn't get a spot there. Now in the last few months, I've noticed it's half empty every single day. People cannot afford to park. It's just out of control. We're being taxed. Now, now, now they want to raise the, the rates on the meters, extend the hours. You're going to kill downtown Scranton if this passes. And uh, I know a lot of business people came here tonight saying the same thing. It just cannot be passed the way it is. And I agree with what Councilman Rogan said last week. I think we should go back to the idea of a street smart program or 
a business similar to that. These people don't want it, of course, it, it would hurt them. and They don't think it's feasible. I disagree with them. I think we should look into that again. It's, it's worked in other cities. It's proven in other cities. So I, I don't know what more proof we need. Uh, I guess that's all I have on that subject. Uh, the mayor's salary. I heard a lot of discussion last week about it. I think some of the ideas were terrible. I think we should just set it at $60,000. I think Councilman Rogan also said that. And if for some reason he deserves an, another raise, vote that in. But, but to raise every year and then after four years go back to 50000 I think that's a ridiculous idea. No city does that. Just make it a set salary and just leave it at that. And I think right now 60000 is fair. If you want to raise it again next year, but to raise it to 80000 it's, it's with our financial status, it's, it's wrong. I think 60000 is a fair raise right now. Uh, the truck ban on Lake Scranton Road. That the signs haven't been put up there yet, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Attorney Hughes, can council do anything to force the city to put those truck ban signs up? Since uh, Lake the, Scranton Road, I'm sorry, Lake Scranton, Lake Scranton Road. Road. Uh, I was up there recently and didn't see any. Well, the, well, the law was, it's law, right? The truck ban was passed by council, it's law, those signs should be put up. I mean, Attorney Hughes, can council force anybody to put them up? It would be up to the mayor. I mean, council, that legislation came down from the solicitor's office, was passed by council, signed by the mayor. It's up to the up to the mayor to enforce that. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I know last week, uh, Councilman Rogan said the Linden Street Bridge is gonna they're gonna start to work on it soon and should be fixed by the end of this year. That would be great news, but I'll believe it when I see it. That that should have been fixed. I don't know how long ago. Now the, the Music Street Bridge was damaged not that long ago. That, they're going to start work on that Monday. Uh, I think it was just a lot of foot dragging on that bridge, and it's a real inconvenience to a lot of people. And I, I, I hope, hope it is fixed by the end of the year, but I will believe it when I see it. Mr. Spindler, I'll be sure to keep everyone posted on that as well as, you know, like we said before the meeting, as fellow Westsiders, it's, you know, it, it makes us go out of the way every day. You know, Absolutely. for me, to and from work every day, it's, you know, an extra five minutes, add it to my commute, five and or ten me, minutes you know, because of the being I, stuck in I the don't lights. care going out of the way, but for an emergency vehicle that has to go out of the way, that, that could cost somebody's life. Absolutely. And I think it's, it, this is just dragged down long enough. And I, I thought they were supposed to start it last July. Now we're in February and still no sign of it. So hopefully they will start soon and have it done soon. Uh, that's all I have. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me if I don't uh, pronounce the next name right. I can't read it in its entirety. Julie Mc, Mc, McDonald? Sorry about that. Oh, that's okay. I, I, I just had a tough time uh, yeah, reading the, the last part of the writing there of the last that's fine. Thing. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. My name is Julie McDowell. I'm the owner of Northern Light Espresso Bar, which is uh, located on Courthouse Square at 536 Spruce Street. I have a very brief statement, and then I just want to touch on a couple of points that you gentlemen mentioned earlier. Okay. The purpose of having parking meters and setting them at a sufficiently high rate is to create turnover in parking places while not keeping the rates so high as to discourage people from visiting downtown in the first place. Public parking is one of a downtown's most important assets. The pricing structure can impact the success of downtown businesses, influence potential developers, and new businesses' decisions to locate in downtown. We believe it would be advantageous for the city to look at the big picture. The system that we have now is broken, and unless we can fix what is wrong with the current system, regardless of who is managing it, it will still be a broken system. These are a few issues that we have with the current system. Courthouse Square already has limited parking. It is congested with city, 
county, and state vehicles. These cars do not pay to park and take up spaces that could be used by downtown patrons. This is a loss of revenue and needs to be addressed. Food vendors that park on Courthouse Square use spotter vehicles that park all day so that when their food trucks roll in, they have a place to park. Outside our shop, we had a vendor who parked his car in handicapped parking all day on Friday so he could park his car around 4.30 and leave it there for the entire weekend right outside my business. This needs to be addressed. Signage. It is imperative that the city have signage in place directing visitors to, and customers to downtown to parking garages. Speaking of parking garages, it makes absolutely no sense that we have empty parking garages and streets full of cars. There is no incentive right now to park in a parking garage. The city needs to find ways to make parking in garages attractive to those who live and work here. I have a few suggestions. Offer the top level of the parking garages to, at a discount to people who work in the city. It will get these cars off the street, create guaranteed revenue for garages, and increase turnover at the meters. Offer discounted parking to those people who reside in the city. Again, it will get these cars off the street, increase meter turnover, and provide guaranteed revenue for garages. And in regards to Saturday parking, we believe this will only discourage downtown visitors. People generally do not have a problem finding parking on a Saturday. Downtown Scranton does not need to be metered on Saturday, and it will be detrimental to the needs of local merchants. I can speak for myself. Our gross receipts are 30% lower on Saturday than they are Monday through Friday. We've all worked really hard to get people to come down on the weekend. I'd hate to give them a reason not to come. Um, okay, I lost my place. Sorry about that. <laughs> Basically, uh, as far as addressing the plan, uh, for, I, I personally believe that the city needs to address the plan on a more long-term basis. There are very serious issues that directly affect downtown merchants, employees, and residents. All we ask the city to do is consider the big picture. Let's all work together, together to continue to make downtown Scranton a destination for visitors and not visit those who so much want to be a part of it now. Okay, so sorry about lost, losing my place there. But just to touch on a couple of things briefly that you guys brought up before, um, one of you mentioned something about you didn't think that people fed the meters all day if they worked downtown. I have 15 part-time employees. They feed the meters all day and they park their cars in places that we could have patrons parking at because it's not advantageous for them to park in the parking garage. Um, also, <clears throat> no, I can't read my writing, it doesn't matter. I want to thank you gentlemen for tabling the legislation tonight. That was a very good move on your part. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Maureen Duffy. Hi, my name is Maureen Duffy. I am an owner of Duffy Accessories. I have a retail store for 25 years in the city of Scranton. I come here on behalf of the downtown merchants because we are outraged that it is really going to discourage so many people to not shop downtown, not come down to pick up something. Um, people don't like to pay to park, which is why the garages are empty. And um, all day long, I know more about parking now than I think that contract is listed. I mean, it's insane. I could tell you how much it is at every garage. To go to the movies, it's $7 to park at that parking garage. The parking garage at Papa's Pizza, to go make a bank deposit, one hour, $3.65. And these are just people that said, oh, I went there last week or I went the other night. And that's why the movie theater is vacant. I mean, mainly they sell the same movies at the same price. Nobody wants to pay. So I'm also involved in a lot of things with the community. I am on the board of directors of the Forum Towers, and there's 80 residents that live there. A lot of them are senior citizens. This parking, 8 to 8 p.m., I can't imagine having these people having to go feed the meters, and a lot of the residents park on the street. I also park on the street six days a week. 
So, and I feed the meter all day long, move my car, set a little timer. It's a joke. But I'm willing to pay because I love the city of Scranton and I know that's what it cost. But my customers, they have options. They could go to Dixon City, they could go other places, Montage. We have a lot of competition, big box stores, chains, and it's really tough times. And I think anything to discourage people from coming downtown is a terrible idea. I'm also on the board of directors of First Friday, which is a huge event in downtown, and I want to say it's probably the best night of business for every single business in the city of Scranton. That's a free event. It's a national event. Now they're going to have to charge parking till 8 o'clock. That changes that. People come because they could afford it. We get people from all over, new customers that finally see your business. And then to charge them to come. People already told me with the articles in the newspaper that they're not going to be coming. It's not even a done deal. And a lot of people think it's a done deal already. They're out paying the meters tonight. And I told them it didn't start. But people, I mean, we have a lot to be concerned about here. And the lack of communication, there was no open dialogue with the businesses. I mean, my friends, we all support local downtown businesses. Die hard, always on the soapbox, telling them about all the new places. My neighbor is Sid Markowitz. He's been here for 64 years. People are running in there to buy a newspaper, and then they get a $20 ticket. It's, it's unjust. It's not necessary. There's no validation. I mean, that's not right either. There should be incentives to come downtown. We need it. Businesses are leaving. Forum Towers, four commercial units out of the 10 left as of January 1st. That's a big difference. It's a lot of employees. There's McCary and McCary Physical Therapy. People going in with cast on their legs have to run out and have a therapist go feed the meter. I mean, there's so many different issues and I would love that you would come to one of our meetings and talk to us about our concerns because we are the city. People come down to support us. We support it. We buy our lunch at the delis. You go to a place, you pay the meter. I mean, when I get a ticket, I pay it if I'm guilty. That's the deal. But a lot of people get aggravated and say, I don't want to come back to town. I mean, I'm coming to your store because I like what you have. I have a small gift shop. Items are priced from 5 to $50. They don't want to get a $20 ticket. It's really discouraging. So I'm glad you did table the legislature tonight about this because it was necessary. There are so many questions that they could not answer this morning at the business meeting that nobody would sign it. I mean, a high school group would not do it. So we definitely need to reconsider, maybe put it out to bid again and see what else we can come up with because there's money to be made and I just hope you would consider that and talk to the businesses. And Mr. Mike Washa would return a phone call or an email. It's been months. We've been trying to get that. $100 an hour? No wonder why we're broke. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Our next speaker is uh, Dan LaMagna. Good evening, Council, residents. I think I was near the end of the list, so that's probably a good thing. Uh, good very evening. impressed with the ladies who spoke this evening, coming here tonight with no agenda other than to see the city of Scranton become successful. Uh, you know, I moved here seven years ago, sold my house in Blakely, and purchased a home on the East Mountain. Brought my business here, the NEPA Miners, minor league football team. And, you know, seven years <coughs> later, it's really getting concerning being a resident and business owner of Scranton. It's very difficult to read the newspaper every day, seeing the mayor make some decisions of giving raises when we're on the verge of bankruptcy. You know, the time we're spending on this meter parking when we don't have all the data. You know, in seven years, I've had a lot of politicians from the county to the mayor to council to the school board come to my house for a vote, but I never see anybody supporting my business on a Saturday night as we bring a minor league team to this area. And I know a lot of the other businesses in the community have their concerns as well. 
I think it's time we think differently, get away from the old good old boys network of Northeast PA and put our energy in supporting Scranton and the businesses. You know, we have West Lackawanna, which looks beautiful now, but there's vacant properties. We spent hundreds of thousand dollars trying to chase Bueno Pizza out of there instead of putting that money back into the city. Now with the miners, we have an opportunity to go behind the Mohegan Sun. Seven years of no support here, but they're building a mega sports complex and they want the miners there in that venue. I'm concerned because we've brought money into the city before and after, and now we're going to chase people out. The parking meters are a great concern. I commend you for tabling that tonight because we do need more data. Also, as an associate dean of students at Lackawanna College, I support those students and I hear their concerns as well. And they're concerned about those meters, our commuters, the people we bring in from out of the city. This is their impression of Scranton. You know, I'm a big advocate of brain drain in the area. We want students to stay here, the young professionals. So I hope that as we move forward, we keep in mind what we're doing in Scranton. Let's focus our energy on the businesses and the students and keep people here. And the parking meters is one step towards that, guys. Uh, let us build this city together and not chase people away. And, uh, you know, I commend you guys. It was a long night. But please, let's work with the business owners, the residents, and the students. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Our next speaker is Tom Shimkowski. Hi, how's everyone doing tonight? You'll be happy if my paper is real small, so we're not going to be too bad. <laughs> I'd like to thank you all for, thank like you. I said, for uh, tabling the, uh, uh, the whole thing tonight. And like what Leslie said, I'd like to invite you, please, to meet with the downtown businesses to uh, go over our concerns. I think you'll find out that our concerns are also your concerns. Uh, just a little background, just the uh, importance of your decisions that you're going to make. Uh, my father started the business uh, Pizza by Pappas 42 years ago in Scranton, and we've seen a lot of ups and downs in the cities. I've seen a lot of uh, uh, mayors that I agree with, mayors I disagreed with. Um, just to let you know, what's going on with the parking garage part, for 41 years, we've seen an increase in our business. We've never had a year where we did less than the other year, even through all the turmoils and all the um, problems that were going on with the country. Uh, since the takeover in May, and they switched over to all the automatic uh, machinery in the parking garages, this is the first time in almost 42 years that our business has been on the decline. Is it just uh, economics? Is it the garage? I, I really can't say so, but it's just... Uh, from the uh, beginning of the year until May to when the uh, garages decided to go automatic and they got rid of the employees, um, our business has been dropping. I mean, we would like to be able to continue in Scranton. So I'm just uh, bringing this out to you just to let you know that the importance of your decisions do make a difference to myself, my family, and to my employees. Um, please uh, work with us. Uh, I, I would love to see every shop in downtown, storefront filled. Uh, more restaurants is more competition is better for me. Um, I like I said, it's you know, we've we've been here for over four decades. I like to uh, continue being here for many decades more, and um, that's basically it. I just want to let you know that your decision does make a difference on the businesses of downtown and what's going to go. Yeah, thank you for my time. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Bob Navarosky. Gentlemen, ladies. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Robert Nevorowski, 304 Prescott Ave, Scranton, PA. Uh, I know there's a paved cut inspector in the city, and I know who he is, but I'd like to tell him to get out of his house, and he could start right here on Mulberry Street, work his way up, and the 1,100 block there's a cut, you fall into it. Then he could go over to Music Street and, and start down the hill, because not doing his job. Now, what brings me here today is the University of Scranton and the state of Pennsylvania spent $2 million on Mulberry Street. When I was with the Hill Association, we had Governor Ridge come in. Fred Bellardi got a $1 million for Mulberry Street. city was supposed to match it with a $1 million. But as usual, the city disappeared and, and, and never come through. So then we got Ken Smith 
got the million again, and the university come up with a million. So there's a $2 million project there. It's a beautiful project. Come down the other day, the parking authority comes up in the 1100 block. It was supposed to, the deal was two traffic lanes, one up, one down, and a turning lane in the middle. Parking authority comes up, the 1100 block, they start and they go out onto the street for the sake of 11 meters in three blocks, and there's no even no heads on the meters. The, the universe, the, the school, they put grass, they put shrubbery, concrete curbs, slate sidewalks, and now we have t 11 poles sticking out of the ground, and they're forcing you to come and down Mulberry. You have to take a sharp left. You almost hit the guy coming up. It shouldn't be there. I come down here, I'm imploring you people, it's aesthetically insane what they did. It's stupid. They've ruined three blocks. How much money are they going to make off 11 crummy meters? Are they going to pay the city debt off? I don't think so. So while the poles are there without a head on them, I would appreciate them getting them out. Now, remember the movie Cool Hand Luke? He was there with the big pipe cutter cutting the meters off and the sheriff said, what are y'all doing, boy? Now, I don't want to go to that extreme. I want to be on the county, you know? But I think they should leave. Did you Sir? say the 1100 block of Mulberry? The 11, 10, and 9 of Mulberry. Of Mulberry, okay, thank you. On the, on, on the right, Mr. McGough, coming, coming down, Right. they start at the 11 and they you're, you're coming down, and then they make a sharp, they, they put a line, a sharp turn. The turn in lane is gone. They put 11 meters in. I would implore you to get them out of there. I mean, they look terrible. They've ruined a $2 million job. So the city, I mean, it just, just does, it was supposed to be like, like a gateway, a promenade. Looks terrible, terrible. I was going to ask about that because, like yes. you said, it's like traveling on Snake Road. That's back right. and forth, and uh, the other night there were some vehicles offloading at the, uh, I guess by the Denaple Center, and they had that all blocked up. So you're trying to squeeze through. Right. It's it's a nightmare. It, it's dangerous, Mr. Yeah. Vasquez. There's going to be somebody's going to have a head-on collision because they're forcing you to go to the left. Another issue I have: Is there an ordinance in this city about parking on the wrong side of the street? It used to be on the ticket. When Elliot was chief, he took it off. I'm sure in your neighborhood, you look around, people pull up, they have to drive on the wrong side of the street to get there. They have to drive on the wrong side of the street to get back onto the right side of the street. They're parked right next to the corners. You can't make the turn. You're, 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 they're, they're hanging out into the next street with parking. Nobody gives a ticket. Nobody. Police go by, but nobody stops to get out of the car to write a ticket. That's another dangerous situation. You're pulling out, you're going to have a head-on collision with somebody coming up the street because you're parked on the wrong side of the street. And just, just to address that, uh, when, when Chief Duffy was here, uh, we did redo the tickets, and there was an extra line put on for certain violations that weren't listed, and right. that was supposed to be... Uh, yeah, one well, see, of it was parking the on the sidewalks, right. parking the wrong way, see, uh, but it has it to be enforced. Elliot took it off the ticket. Yes, and that's, but it, it was there. And Chief Duffy came I'm to sure us, and we had to approve it here. But I'm sure there's a Sydney ordinance against parking on the wrong side of the street. It Correct. Is. It's going to cause a lot of damage, and people are going to get hurt. But I would appreciate if you'd look into Mulberry Street, because my next step, and I'm not trending here, I'm going to go to the state. Because the deal was state with the $2 million, two lanes, and a turning lane. Not, not, not 11 meters in a parking lane. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. you. Our next speaker tonight is Dave Dobson. Good evening, Council. Dave Good Dobson, evening. resident Good evening. of Scranton. Chief Troublemaker. <laughs> uh, Okay, now we've heard a lot about the uh, the parking tonight, and once again, I'd like to push for a commission 
and on tax exempts. I'm not going to call them uh, nonprofits. I'm not going to call them anything. I'm not going to call anybody names. But I would love if we could compensate uh, a competent attorney like Mr. Hughes there to do a study on how many tax exemptions can be handed out off of one town's tally. If you study the uh, typical amount of exemptions, uh, you'll find that they're roughly equal to our budget hole. And every year they increase. So, I mean, currently it's water over the dam and we're stuck with the state constitution and, and everybody outside of town seems determined to uh, uh, use us as a, as a placemat for their tax exempts. And they don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear about the commuter tax. They don't want to hear about uh, pilots. They don't want to hear about paying extra for parking. And uh, now, that being said, uh, the parking on the term, I have concerns about that. And businesses, years back, and I'm not criticizing anybody, they could have came and possibly headed off all of this ill-advised spending uh, back then. Now we're stuck with the situation where things have to be paid for and special interests came into town. Uh, one hotel chain went bankrupt, what, three times now? It was bankrupt when I first moved here and I was buying a house. I was sitting over at uh, the real estate agency across the street and they had stopped construction on it. And they went bankrupt again, and I remember before I started attending council, Gary DeBilio. And then once again, about two, two more years, uh, two years ago or so, they went bankrupt again. And we're, we keep feeding these people, and they, they're unable to stay in business now. They're here, and that, that's understood. We can't kiss them goodbye, but, and we gave them we gave them the store, but uh, what about it? I, I mean, do, are we going to just keep allowing tax exempts and uh, people that are uh, private entities taking over our, our public property and, and uh, giving them the store? So, uh, I mean, you have my total support on tabling this tonight and uh, with that, and uh, it's a shame. But uh, uh, the more you look into it and the better job you do, I think you'll find that your jobs, uh, you'll get a lot more compliments and, and less criticism. Uh, also, it, it came to my attention that certain businesses were financing things like uh, first night and Friday night, uh, first Friday, and fireworks downtown. And it's just a suggestion, but I think council should uh, get a list of those people and at least thank them for spending their own money. If somebody's sponsoring something out of their corporate pocketbook, it would be a nice gesture. Uh, at least it's not on our tab where we're paying for a $20,000 fireworks display or something like around the 4th of July or what have you. If a bank wants to do that, they should be at least thanked for it. And, and, and mentioned. It's nice to hear your name when you did something nice for somebody. And uh, f totally uh, consider referendums in the future uh, on some of this. And it, it's a good way of dumping things off your back. Let the people decide. But they do have to decide whether they want to pay more taxes or do they want to see things go up. And it's... Uh, it's a shame it has to be that way, but that's the way it has to be. And uh, one mentioned uh, animal control was in my neighborhood. A lot of people are letting cats breed and, and uh, they're maybe letting that treasured pet roam around. Well, it's uh, the 600 block of Crown Avenue and vicinity, so 
if you have a pet that you're letting roam around and he comes up missing or she and you're, they're not neutered well you have nobody but yourself to blame thank you and have a good night and, uh, thank you finally one one little quick thing the trade packs that were over the last 20 years are what are killing the industrial class call your congressman and tell him take his trade pack and shove it and uh, it's just 30% uh, of our industry has been lost it's no wonder we're in the trouble we're in no matter what else we do until that stops we're in trouble. Thank you and have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else wish to address council? Andy Sprague, this is Grant Fells, Grantonian. I'm not going to talk too much at the parking. I already gave Mr. Rogan an earful yesterday. I don't think he wants to have it again. But there was something mentioned when they were saying about their citations, they were talking about a city-wide citation. And I thought they were only going to be with the meters, the citation for people parking, not to go out through the city and look for violations. That's the job of the police force. But they did mention it. And I was a little surprised. I don't think, you probably glossed over it, but I, I listened to that citation, and it did strike a core with me. Because, yeah, they can get a lot more money by instead of doing just the uh, parking meters, to go out there and look for somebody, like you mentioned, parking on the wrong side of the road, parking on the sidewalk, park doing this, parking that. And I don't think that was your intention in it. Well, anyway, you can, I brought it up so you can address it, if you will. If not, you're giving them car blanche to go throughout the city and hand out citations. Okay, the other part is the mayor. I mean, uh, the mayor's salary. Not the mayor itself. I'm tired of talking about him. But the mayor's salary. Now, what we want a salary to be large enough that a man, we can bring some new blood into the city. A man with a wife, maybe a couple children, could live on the salary. 50000 is ridiculous. When we get through playing the policemen for all their back pay, I guess for the next four years they'll make more than the mayor, way more than the mayor. So I believe you should think about at least giving the salary uh, what he does. He does a lot. In fact, most of the damage we got is because we paid so little for the mayor and nobody, the only person that could run is somebody with enough business. The Bilio ran because he got a business. But an individual or somebody that just got married or whatever has to be given a salary that they can live with. I mean, you possibly got a lot of people on this payroll that makes a lot more than the mayor. Probably many, many times more than the mayor. So you got to look at that. I mean, a salary of 70000 isn't bad. I think a man would look at the 70000 and say, well, I can live on that. I don't have to have a lot of different things out there to bring money in. I don't have to have an insurance company to bring money in. Or I don't have to have this or that. I could actually live on the 70000 and put my full effort into the city. And that's what we really need. Somebody that can put their full effort into the city. We all know we have problems. There's no sense bringing them up. We've got a multitude of them. I can speak for hours on the problems. But that isn't the solution. We've got to look at the mayor as being the top executive in the city. We've got to look at that. We want people in that position that knows what they're doing, or at least has common sense. I mean, you're looking at this. Look at this legislation that you're talking. Nobody went out and talked to the business people. I mean, you got something that was supposed to be passed tonight, and nobody got out and talked to the business people. I mean, Mr. Rogan talked to us, and actually everything that we said is what the business people said. It's counterproductive. So, so but the mayor's salary, I think, is the most important thing you've got to look at. 
You want a man in that position that can live on a salary and not need a bunch of other things around to do, or to have a lot of income coming from outside the city or this, that, or whatever. So I wish when you bring that up, you think about that. You think about a salary, you can figure what you make. I make more on retirement than the mayor. You think that's right? That you should have a man on retirement, sitting down doing nothing, making more than somebody active. <laughs> but that's how it is. So think about that. I think that's one of the most important things you can do for the city's future, is set her a salary complement to what that man has to do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Does anyone else care to address council? Good evening, Council. Marie Schumacher, City Resident. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I, uh, most of my questions were answered tonight, and I, I thank you for that. And, uh, but I do have, if I could beg your indulgence one more time, I have yet to be convinced that there was a bid advertised for this entire package of the enhancements and the management of the on-street parking. So if you would please indulge me and get a copy of that from the business administrator, uh, I would really like to see that, if, especially if you're planning to proceed. And even if you're not, if we're going to redo it, which I hope you end up doing, uh, maybe you could talk, see if something else could be added to it. Uh, we'll next, contact uh, the BA and, and try to get that for you. Thank you. Um, Next, what, even though it was tabled tonight, uh, what was the, uh, I think it was 6, 6A, uh, what was the amount of the fines to be uh, paid for a site uh, violation? Pardon, could you repeat the question? I'm sorry, I didn't Yeah, the what was the part. penalty for the violation that's in that 6A? Penalty for a violation? I thought it was 20 hours. I believe Say what? it's 20. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, while you're doing that, I'll, I'll, I'll continue. I'm going to run out of my five minutes. Yeah, okay. And then uh, three, uh, also with respect to that, uh, is there going to be a cost for parking permits? For instance, I, I believe it's $5 for currently $5 for a parking meter if you're doing a renovation and you have uh, on street a dumpster on the street. It's $5 per day. Is that a separate? Uh, ordinance or is that part of um, 6A? As far as the dumpster permit? Mm -hmm. uh, I believe that's a separate ordinance. Okay, so will that, how will that uh, mesh with the, with the authority you're giving under standard parking? Um. So that's, a, that's another open that's, question. Yeah, that's an interesting question. Yeah. Um. Ms. Schumacher, uh, yeah. $20 within 24 hours. What after 24? Uh, $30. I believe it's 30 but I didn't get that one. Oh, okay. I, I only got the first part. Okay, now, okay. Now Thank you're you. asking a second I'll question. be here for a few more minutes. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, next. Um, I think it would be nice to see just even a straw man of what is in the budget that contain the $1.8 million um, revenue to the city. Uh, supposedly that was sent in and I would also like to see a straw man of the monthly report that they were, uh, they were stating they're going to provide. Uh, doesn't need numbers, but the budget I think it would be very nice to see. Um, and then, I think really a strange juxtaposition on tonight's agenda. I just, I really had to laugh at my, to myself because here we're talking about paying $120,000 per year for the first year of a, of a contract to manage, a fee to manage 100 and, or 1,400 meters in the city and going up to a minimum of $135,000 and six or $135,060 in the fifth year and 
yet we're talking about our chief executive officer, our mayor, making $50,000. Uh, it just doesn't make any sense. I mean, managing parking parking meters is not exactly rocket science. Uh, that IPS, they're going to do the training. Um, it just doesn't, it, there's just nothing, not enough in it for us. I, I really think we should bring it back in-house, but that's up to you guys. Uh, also, on the post file of Council 6, of 2013. If I understood correctly, and, and the microphone wasn't working too well, so I don't know if the gentleman from Standard said that they were still going to look at some of the other streets, uh, presumably with the intention of putting meters on them or taking meters off. And I thought that was a function of council, and that's what you were you're going to do tonight, but it got tabled. Um, and I, are you giving that right up after this, after what you're, what is 6A tonight? It, once you pass that, or it would standard or some other contract person be allowed to make future determinations on where the parking meters went and hours and times, charges? It's my understanding that that would still have to be passed by ordinance, but I'll I'll definitely double check okay, that. Okay, because, yeah, if they would have to come back to you. I don't see anything in the agreement that states that, however. Oh. Okay, two more quick ones, if I okay. may, if you'd indulge me again. Um, as a patron of the library and civic participant of coming to council meetings and when I can going to school board meetings, um, I just think it would be a travesty to have to come down or either wait till 8 o'clock or to pay for parking to use the beautiful Albright Library and uh, or go to a school board meeting at the administration building or even come here. Um, and then finally, uh, Mr. Lascom, do you have the number of false alarms no, from I, last I year not. yet? I haven't had an opportunity to get that yet. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very thank you. much. Does anyone else wish to address council? Oh, Chrissy. Chrissy. Hey, where's your Ravens hat tonight? Hey, Jack. Oh, real good in, buddy. They beat them, didn't they? Good yeah. game. You know, I heard uh, uh, earlier tonight. No, no, the mill. Oh, stop it, Jack. I said, I just did the mill. Just stop the mill. I just fifth to her. Just stop the mill up there. They're stopping us. Thank you. All right, Chrissy. Thank you. Take care. Does anyone else care to address council? 5A motions. Mr. McGough, do you have any motions or comments? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, just to answer Ms. Schumacher's questions, uh, first of all, I can't find any amount for a violation for not paying within 24 hours. I didn't see any amount listed. It may be there, but I did not see it. And the only other, the one clause I see, the city reserves the right to amend this ordinance. So if we're reserving the right to amend the ordinance, that must mean that we have the right to. But it's not the contract. They have to come back and be in the Well, it's a right to amend. Okay, I'll, I'll look into that. But I'm just assuming. Um, it is now, but I, it, there's nothing in the legislation, the current legislation, or the, the one that we were looking at. Um, just to continue with the parking thing, uh, I guess very quick, I've talked a whole lot before. Um, I, I spoke to any number of people today uh, concerning this. As Mr. Rogan said, we are all inundated with phone calls from you know, a variety of people, um, from you know, merchants, citizens, uh, you know, Scranton tomorrow, um, all with concerns and ideas and um, I know that sometimes it's we're not people don't believe that we listen but we do and um, w believe me uh, we have or at least I have the same and I think uh, most of us have the same concerns and um, we are we are looking to amend the legislation that's before us certainly tonight on the one of the things that was going to be done was to 
Uh, there was a, supposedly a proposal to uh, at least vote on deleting Saturday from, you know, meter collection. So it was a step, you know, forward. Uh, hopefully we can deal with the, the basic issues uh, by next week and that we can look at this again. Um, it, there are two separate things that we're looking at in dealing with this parking, and I mentioned it as we spoke to the people from Standard Parking. Uh, the one part of this is the management part. We do need somebody to manage our parking. I, I know that it was suggested that we could do it in-house. I think we have proven that we can't. Um, you know, one of the things that we spent fighting about was the, the parking authority who was in charge of managing, you know, the, the meters. And we all, you know, I shouldn't say we all agreed, but there was a consensus that it wasn't being done well. So to try and return to this, you know, very same system to me would be, um, you know, foolish. I, I think we're looking at, we have a management company that, um, very professional, um, who has a proposal before us. Um, and since they are also acting as, in dealing with the, although they may be two separate entities or parts of the same entity, um, they're also dealing with the garages. And it was brought up by a couple of speakers that there should be a coordination of effort between people working with the garages and the people, you know, monitoring the meters. Uh, you know, maybe there can be some, you know, synergy between them so that um, we can find what's best for, you know, long-term parkers, uh, diners at night, you know, whoever is coming to the city. But um, the management part of this, uh, I believe that um, we, we need to hire a professional. And while I did dwell on a lot of the cost when, speak, when questioning the people from Standard Parking, uh, it, may have, it, it is a lot of money, but it's not, when you get down to the basic cost, much of those costs that we were speaking about, we were paying to the Scranton Parking Authority. It was costs that we were incurring anyhow. It's not like standard parking is is coming with you know new and additional cost. Yes, the cost of new meters, uh, cost of vehicles. There are some things there, but they may be needed to bring about the enhancement that we want. There is going to be a cost incurred if we are going to improve. Um, meter revenues and parking revenues in general. So I, I guess I'm trying to make a you know, point for looking at a, a professional management company as opposed to doing this in-house. Um, I know there are people who will disagree, but um, at least that's my perspective on it. Um, the thing that when we get to the second part of this in dealing with the rates, the hours, and the days, uh, one of the things that I spoke to the gentleman afterwards about and, and that they did answer is that they will manage, they will manage within the parameters that we establish. It's up to us to establish the parameters for collections and you know, that, that's our responsibility. They, they will work within whatever we ask them to do, whatever parameters we establish. The thing that may be affected is the overall revenue. If, if, we, if we take away Saturday, if we reduce the hours, if we you know, do whatever, um, they will still manage in the same way. It's just that the projected revenues that they have made based on what they what we had before us will not be achieved you know that that would be the reasonable thing to um, expect and 
Um, maybe we have to revise our thinking a little bit as far as our revenue projections are concerned if we want to um, also um, amend this legislation to, um, to meet what we feel are the, the needs of the community. Um, so I, I think that by you know, next week, uh, hopefully we are more informed. We have some of the questions answered that we need and, and that we can move forward with this proposal. The, the longer we put it off, the, I, I guess I'll say the, the less time we have to implement it. And uh, if we are looking to improve revenue from this, we are certainly not going to do it if we prolong it you know, any lengthy period of time. Certainly a week isn't a lengthy period of time, but um, hopefully it doesn't go beyond, much beyond that. A um, couple of other things that were brought up, and uh, I'd just like to comment. I, a couple of people have talked about the uh, SPA employees that were um, not rehired or that were let go. Um, th that's a separate issue from what we were looking at tonight. Uh, as they said, uh, th they had nothing to do with those six people not being rehired. Uh, th we would have to take that up with um, the receivership of the parking authority. Um, I, I don't want to get I don't want to get tied up with a problem that's not part of the problem that we already have. I, I don't want the, the hiring of those six people, to, or the lack of hiring of those six people, to get in the way of dealing with the parking legislation that we have before us. Um, and as far as the mayor's salary is concerned, and we'll, I'll speak more about it as we get to the legislation, um, I still believe that uh, we can go to graduated um, raises to a certain point. I think that that would be a, a, an equitable thing to do to get the salary to a position where we feel it is uh, uh, reasonable. And the last thing, um, I don't know if uh, I, I received my tax bill in the mail today um, so that the real estate taxes have gone out. Uh, and. Uh, it, th the first thing I did was I took a look at the totals and worked out uh, at least my bill. The, the city portion of my tax, real estate taxes is 22.8%. The county was 25.8% and the school district was 51.4%. So the, the, the tax bill from the school district is more than double or, or more than the other two combined. And the city is still the lowest taxing body uh, of, of the three, um, despite the fact that we raised taxes a, a significant percent. Um, and, and I think that's something important to keep in mind as we move forward. And that's all, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Rogan, do you have any motions or comments? Yes, um, I'll try to be brief. Um, I just want to speak a little bit about the parking, um, about both issues, about the increasing of rates, the extending of hours, and um, the idea of having a firm run the management of the parking. Um, one thing that was brought up, and it just, just struck me while listening to people talk and, and through the, you know, the length of the meeting tonight, was if, let me just start off by saying I'm not opposed to having an outside company come in and run the meters if it's the right company with the right plan. I am concerned with the fact that this company already does run the garages. So if you have a firm that's running the garages and running the meters, they essentially have a monopoly on parking within the city. I think what might be a better solution is just to let, if we had another firm in charge of the on-street parking and left Central in charge of the garages, the two would be competing against each other, which, as we know, and as the small business owners that were here today know, that really is what drives to success when you have that competition. Um, it was mentioned that there's a 70% vacancy rate in the garages, and the meters are full. And that's because, as, as it was stated before, it's cheaper to pay at the meter than to go into the garage. 
And I, I say this all the time, you're, you're better off broadening the base and charging less than by having just a few people paying more. For instance, if you have 30 people, just for easy numbers, that paid $2 a piece, you have $60 that that garage is generating. If you have 70 people paying a dollar a piece, you're getting in $70. So it's in our interest to have the garage just full and to keep meter parking for businesses, for people who are going to go shopping into one of the businesses maybe for an hour or a half hour. Somebody who's going to pick up coffee, pick up you know, whatever they're going to purchase. Um, the way I look at meters is that it's, it's a balance between the city and the business owners where both people will win, where the city gets some revenue from the street parking and the business owners don't have to worry about people parking in front of their business for the entire day where nobody would be able to park and, and go in and patronize their business. So it's a balance that has to be struck between keeping the rates at a level that will have the turnover that's necessary, but not making them so oppressive where people won't shop. Somebody sent me a message today, and I'm not gonna mention their name, but they said they went downtown for a cup of coffee a few weeks ago, went and enjoyed the coffee, ran into somebody on the way out, talked for an extra 10, 15 minutes, as many of us do when you run into somebody you haven't seen in a while, gets back to his car, and sure enough, he received the citation. So his $3 cup of coffee just became a $35 cup of coffee. And that's very frustrating, and even though it has nothing to do with the business owner, that person is going to feel you know, that they were ripped off, and they may not patronize that business again. Now, I absolutely, and I think we all, want to bring in as much money as we can on meter revenue, but it has to be done in a fair way. Um, I think the, the proposals that were brought up years ago to have the meter reset, I think that is a great plan. It will bring in more money for the city because that extra time that somebody paid for goes back to zero, but everybody is paying for, the amount of, for their fair share when they're there. If you put in for an hour and you stay for an hour, you pull off, you don't get a ticket. If the next person, if you pay for an hour and you happen to leave early, well, you shouldn't have paid for the hour. You should only pay for the 30 minutes. And then it would reset, the next person would come in, pay the rate. So by doing an item like that, having a reset or things of that nature, that will generate more money without increasing rates, which will look bad for the city and will hurt business owners and workers and patrons. Um, that being said, as far as the, um, the changes on that end go, I, I, I wouldn't oppose any legislation that would have Saturday collections. I, I believe the main reason for the meters is to have turnover for business owners. It's not just to make money for the city. It's that balance that I talked about. And as, as business owners said, and as anybody who drives downtown on a Saturday will notice, there's quite a bit of parking available on Saturday because you don't have your everyday nine to five workers parking in the metered spots downtown. So I think Saturday collections are, are a bad idea. And um, I also agree with offering discounts in the garages. It's not, you know, if we had 100% occupancy, I wouldn't be sitting, sitting here saying that we should offer a discount. But when you're only at 30% and you have those extra spaces that you already paid to build, the spots are there and we have to maintain them, we might as well have somebody there um, versus leaving them vacant. So I hope that we could all discuss this as a board. I, I hope this isn't something that's put on the agenda next week with a couple little fixes, because this is a large issue. This isn't something that can be fixed in a week. And I, I do like the idea that some residents and business owners brought up today of having a roundtable discussion, and we could even have it here at council, which I think would be great, because it would be televised for the public of business owners, folks who work downtown, elected <coughs> officials, and other interested parties to just sit and discuss. We could do it on a Thursday or we could do it on another night during the week and try to, if we have to advertise it, we could advertise it. But everyone could sit down and, and discuss what works, what doesn't work. And a balance could be struck that the city, so the city could bring in some more revenue, the business owners will be happy, the workers will be happy, 
and it doesn't have to be a, a, an all or nothing. There is a middle ground, and that's what we have to, what we have to uh, work to achieve. And also, I, I requested this months ago, and we still haven't heard back. Um, if my colleagues agree, I would also like to request a caucus with Receiver Washoe um, regarding the parking authority. Um, I know we did send this request a while back, and I know scheduling was tight, and maybe with Mr. Washoe just getting in. Um, so, Mrs. Craig, can we please send that request as well um, to have Mr. Washoe come in and, and just answer some questions to counsel and, and speak a little bit about what he has done since being appointed receiver. So that is all I have on that issue. And just one other thing, briefly, I meant to bring this up last week, but I kind of got sidetracked by some other issues. Um, this is from the West Granton Hyde Park Neighborhood Watch. Um, and I'm just going to read the first paragraph. Um, within the past year, the West Granton Hyde Park Neighborhood Watch formed an Elm Street Project Committee with the intent of successfully implementing the DCED program in a manner similar to South Scranton. The Elm Street Project has been folded into an initiative known as the Keystone Communities, and it has one new requirement. The West Scranton Hyde Park Neighborhood Watch must obtain a cooperation agreement for work to be done from both Scranton City Council and the mayor. With that, they ask for your, our council formal support formal approval and cooperation with their efforts to revitalize Main Avenue in the Hyde Park section of West Scranton. They have attached the DCD, DCED recommended cooperation agreement for our consideration. The funds acquired would be appropriated through DCED requirements and managed through the West Scranton Hyde Park Neighborhood Watch. They are not seeking any funds from the city. So there are two items in the draft that do not apply. So with my colleagues' agreement, I would ask that we, we definitely consider this. I think this is a great proposal for West Scranton. I do know um, from talking to the president of the uh, Neighborhood Watch, Karen Foster, that they are looking at one of the buildings that's actually on Main Avenue right next to uh, Citizen Savings Association that's for sale as, as one of their starter, you know, where places to start the project. And it's a beautiful home that I actually, when I was looking to purchase a home I was looking at, they need a little bit more repair than I could afford, but it's uh, over 100 years old. It's, it's beautiful, and I, I would just love to see that revitalized and, and that block of West Scranton um, to be what it, what it used to be. And we, we already have a lot of great businesses in that neighborhood. So hopefully this is something that council and the mayor could get behind to support them. And that is all I have for tonight. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Loscombe, do you have any motions or comments? Uh, just briefly. Uh, we've had a lot of discourse this evening. I appreciate the fact that the uh, gentleman from Standard Parking came in and he answered quite a few questions. Um, to the best of their knowledge, we, I think we asked just about every question we possibly could here. Uh, but more importantly, I really appreciated the amount of people that came out for this meeting tonight. I, I, I know it was a hot button issue and, uh, you know, a lot of the standard speakers, they're always asking for more input from, from other people. And this is what we need. Uh, we can't always get to meetings uh, of these other organizations and that, but, uh, you know, anytime we are available, we try to. But I do appreciate them coming out and, uh, you know, just discussing their ideas and uh, what will work for them, too. We have, it, it's, you know, we have to have a vibrant downtown. And, uh, you know, the business people are, are the crux of it. And I really appreciate, like I said, the discourse back and forth. We do have some decisions to make. And, uh, you know, there's still a lot of, of answers that we're waiting for before we could even make those decisions. So that's all I have to say tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Loscombe. <clears throat> Good evening. Tonight I'll be very brief uh, given the duration of the meeting and I was going to plan on speaking on the uh, two pieces of legislation regarding standard parking during votes, uh, but we're not voting on them, so I will save that for next week. But I am glad that we did have Mr. John Rogers um, Mr. Brian Scoggins and uh, Mr. Romy Valera come in and answer some of our questions that we had. Uh, tonight there were a number of questions. There are a number of quest uh, questions raised by citizens as well. 
that were forwarded to us and I'm and I'm glad that um, some of those were answered but at this time there are still some questions that remain unanswered and hopefully over the next week uh, some more dialogue can be held between uh, standard parking as well as City Council and we could get the answers to some of the questions that are that are still remaining out there um, regarding the mayor's salary uh, this was a, a hot topic discussion item last week after thinking about the mayor's salary over the past week, my personal feeling is that $80,000 is too much of a raise in such dire financial times. I've received phone calls and emails on the issue, and no one thinks that the salary should be increased to $80,000 from what I've received. Most of the people that I spoke to or received emails from believed that an increase was warranted since there was not an increase in over a decade. Therefore, tonight I'll be making a motion to increase the salary of the mayor to $60,000 per year rather than $80,000 per year. And with that being said, I hereby make a motion to amend file of council number seven, 2013 of 1987, section two, to increase the salary of the mayor to $60,000 per year rather than $80,000 per year. Second. We have a second um, on the question. Yes, uh, and while I, I believe that the salary should be raised, I think it should go beyond 60. And as I said before, I think the, the way to do that is through graduated raises I think that that would be the most equitable way if we set it at 60 it's that's set for I would believe another four years that yes. it can't be changed uh, again and um, sixty thousand dollars doesn't put the mayor of the city of Scranton even close to um, the salaries of mayors of um, comparable cities within the um, Commonwealth um, I, I really do believe that it it should be raised beyond 60 um, perhaps to a maximum of about 75,000 if, if, if I might comment I, I do agree with mr. McGough I, I do believe that the mayor should get higher pay you know a hundred thousand dollars but you know we're in a tough position right now we have no shortage of candidates running for the seat right now so we still have four years to see how this city turns around but economically right now you know I I believe it's still a good salary uh, to, to take that big of a jump from 50 to 80 when uh, you, you see the condition we've been in for the past 12 years whatever uh, till we could get ourselves straightened out economically and, and climb out of this distressed status, uh, I think uh, at this point it's it's fair, and that's that's the reason I I will be voting in favor of it. I don't know if Mr. Rogan heard the motion because he was out. No, of I there. apologize. I wanted to speak to one of the business owners before they left. Are we on the question? Or? Yes. yes, we're okay. on the question. Um, as I stated in paper in at last week's meeting, um, I said that I, I would go along with increasing the mayor's salary to $60,000, so I will support this. Um, obviously, the mayor of Scranton still will be underpaid compared to his counterparts. Um, but like I said, it's public service is not to make a large salary. It's uh, for the love of your city and to do a service even when look at the hours that members of city council put in for twelve thousand dollars a year if you break it out by hour it's less than minimum wage I'm not complaining I signed up to do it because I love to do it 
I love going out and talking to people and trying to help them with their problems and hopefully we'll have a mayor that that will do that as well but not having a raise in 25 years for the mayor's position is a little excessive so I will support the $10,000 raise um, instead of the $30,000 raise okay all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. opposed no the ayes have it and so moved Also tonight, I had a um, a few other items to mention. City Council did receive some information as far as delinquent taxes and delinquent refuse fees has uh, have been concerned. Um, for the period of January 1st to January 31st, uh, the City of Scranton collected $52,506.15 in delinquent um, property taxes from Northeast Revenue. As we all know, Northeast Revenue is collecting all of the delinquent real estate taxes from the years of 2011 and prior 2012 delinquent real estate taxes of course will now be collected by the single tax office also um, they ran a distribution from january 1st to january 31st regarding uh, delinquent refuse payments and so far um, they collected fifty nine thousand seven hundred thirty two dollars and twelve cents in delinquent refuse payments also, um, City Council has received a notification that Comcast has sent us a uh, check for the franchise fee of $202,732. This was received on February 7th of 2013 in our office. And this includes uh, the the uh, statement period of October to December of 2012 so that's what the franchise fee uh, equated to for that time period and I do have a few citizens requests North Scranton residents have informed me that there are large potholes near the stop sign of the intersection of Well Street and Main Avenue uh, Mrs. Craig, if you could uh, please contact Director Dewar about this uh, situation and ask him to handle in the best way that he sees fit. Uh, the 200 block of Hollister Avenue, North Scranton residents have informed me that the entire 200 block is in poor shape. Residents report numerous potholes and cracks in the road, making travel conditions difficult. Mrs. Craig, if you could please add this to the concerns to contact Director Dewar about uh several scranton residents have actually contacted me regarding christmas trees uh residents have reported that their christmas trees were never picked up and they're still waiting for them to be picked up on refuse collection days <laughs> um so with that being said um mrs craig if you could please add this to the list of concerns for director dewar and i received an email from the or from an employee of the ctc regarding the condition of greenbush and reese streets the email reads as follows mr joyce just thought i'd send another useless email to tell you about greenbush and reese street in north scranton they have been patched here and there over the years, featured in the Scranton Times about how bad they are, but no one is doing anything. They haven't been completely paved in over 37 years. Going down Reese Street, you now have to almost come to a stop and dodge all the holes. Twelve school buses go up and down those hills four times a day, plus all the employees, the students, the practical nurse or practical nursing students night classes and all the visitors and parents we receive daily please if you won't pave them get someone to patch them properly I've been at the CTC for 33 years and they're horrible I understand though however these streets are on the paving list for 2013 uh, Mrs. Craig, please contact Director Dewar to inquire when these roads will be paved. 
I just feel bad and it's a shame that some people in Scranton think they're sending useless emails to council members and uh, perhaps if we could get a time frame of when those roads will be paved, we could get this information back to the woman who wrote this email and that's it. 5B, no business at this time. Sixth order, 6A, tabled. 6B, reading by title, file of council number seven, 2013, in ordinance. Amending file of council number 31 of 1987, section two, by increasing the salary of the mayor to $60,000 annually with said salary increase effective January 1st, 2014. You've heard reading by title of item 6B, what is your pleasure? I move that item 6B pass reading by title. Second. On the question, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. The ayes have it and so moved. Seventh order 7A. For consideration by the Committee on Public Safety for adoption, file of council number 4, 2013, establishing a no parking zone along the easterly side of West Market Street, State Route 6011, from Brick Avenue to Rockwell Avenue to allow for safe site distance for a proposed driveway by Noons Market for a property located at 416 West Market Street. What is the recommendation of the chairperson for the Committee on Public Safety? As chairperson for the Committee on Public Safety, I recommend final passage of item 7A. Second. On the question, roll call please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Lascom? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. I hereby declare item 7A legally and lawfully adopted. 7B, tabled. <clears throat> if there are no further, if there's no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>